Welcome to the Board of Commissioners meeting on this Tuesday, September 8, 2015. Thank you for your presence. <coughs> At this time, we hope and pray that all had a great Labor Day weekend. The invocation will be led this morning by the Reverend Justin Peters, Keys of Authority Ministries, and the Pledge of Allegiance will be led by Commissioner Libel. Let us all stand together. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for those gathered here this morning. We come to you today asking for your guidance, wisdom, and support as this meeting begins. Help us to value and appreciate each other. May your spirit guide us. May your grace abound in us. Help us to engage in meaningful discussion. Allow us to grow closer and nurture the bonds of community. Fill us with your grace, Lord God, as decisions are made that affect the citizens of Putnam County, Florida. You have entrusted us as stewards of your creation. Please guide our hearts as decisions are made. We seek you first in all we do together. We confess that we are nothing without you and our trust is in you completely. Help us to listen before speaking. Help us to understand before decisions are made. And continue to remind us that all that is done here today, all that is accomplished, is for the pursuit of the good of the citizens of Putnam County, Florida, for the greater glory of you, and for the service of humanity. We ask these things in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Let's face the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic. One nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Please be seated. Again, thank you for your presence. And as we open uh, our proceedings today, uh, we salute the city of St. Augustine on their 450th birthday commemoration. And uh, we pray that all of the festivities uh, will be well and uh, that the celebration uh, will just be uh, very festive as it continues. Commissioners, each of you should have received the minutes from the August 25, 2015 uh, proceedings of our regular session. What is your pleasure? Mr. Chairman, I move approval. Second. second. I have a proper motion and a double second that the uh, minutes be approved as presented. Further discussion? All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Like sign. Hearing none. Motion carries. Item three, Commissioner Pellicier, proclamation, Patriots Day, and a National Day of Service and Remembrance uh, on 9-11. Thanks, sir. Uh, Putnam County Proclamation number 2014-67, Patriots Day and a National Day of Servants and Remembrance. Whereas on September 11, 2001, the American people endured with courage and heroism the worst act, act, attack on U.S. soil in the nation's history. And whereas in response to this tragedy, Americans across the country came in together in remarkable spirit of patriotism and un unity and carried out countless acts of kindness, generosity, and compassion. And whereas community organizations and family members of 9-11 victims began observing this anniversary of September 11th as a charitable service day to honor the memory of those who were lost and those who united in response to this tragedy, including law enforcement officers, first responders, and volunteers. And whereas Putnam County has many brave men and women serving in our county who, are, who heroically, tirelessly, and courageously put their own well-being at risk in difficult, stressful, and often dangerous situations, and therefore, now therefore be it proclaimed the Putnam County Board of County Commissioners that September 11th is hereby recognized as Patriots Day and a National Day of Service and Remembrance in Putnam County, and its citizens are called upon to honor the lives and memories of those lost through participation in community service and remembrance ceremonies on this day throughout the year. Be it further proclaimed that the citizens of Putnam County are urged to show their support and appreciation of our local heroes, including law enforcement officers, firefighters, paramedics, first responders, and volunteers of Putnam County who give of, give of themselves to protect their community. Thus proclaim this eighth day of September, 2015. Mr. Pellicier, do you move approval of the proclamation? Yes, I'm, I'm sorry, yes, I do move. Proper I'll motion. second it. Have a Mr. second. <laughs> Discussion. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Like sign, hearing none, motion carries. Um, again, uh, our community is blessed to have the men and women uh, who serve tirelessly uh, and with great effort uh, 
24 hours a day, seven days a week, uh, through holidays and uh, those other days as well. And we are grateful to have the ones that we do have. We do also understand that our fiscal limitations off time causes us to be a training ground, but many loyal and dedicated and committed uh, professionals uh, stick it out uh, with us because of their love uh, for our community. So uh, we do encourage you to um, be mindful of all of the activities that will be scheduled um, this coming Friday and we'll review those um, shortly. We have a proclamation going to Act Reverend Justin Peters. If she would please uh, come uh, forward. Proclamation Patriots Day Solemn Assembly Day of Prayer on 9-11. Uh, thank you Reverend Peters for being here. Commissioner Harris will present this proclamation. Thank you. Patriots Day, Solemn Assembly Day of Prayer. Whereas on September 11th, 2015, as we gather to remember the attacks on our nation 14 years ago, the Awakening America Alliance, Cry Out America, has called people to gather for prayer. And whereas our historic leaders have called for periods of prayer for our nation and God has called his people to observe solemn assemblies for generations. And whereas a solemn assembly is a day of restraint where religious and political leaders gather in a serious nature to bring their petitions in the prayer to God. Whereas God has promised in the Bible in 2 Corinthians chapter 7, verses 14 to 15, if my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray, and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and will heal their land. Now mine eyes shall be open and mine ears attend unto the prayer that is made in this place. Now therefore be it proclaimed by the Putnam County Board of Commissioners that September 11th, 2015, is hereby recognized as a day of prayer in Putnam County, and best wishes are extended to all of those gathering across the nation in observance of the Patriots' Day Solemn Assembly Day of Prayer. Mr. Chairman, I make a motion that we accept this proclamation. Thank you, Commissioner Harris. We do have a proper motion. Second. A second. And a second. Second. Further discussion? All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none, motion carries. Thank you, Reverend Peters, for being here. And I present this humbly to you and all of those who are organizers of prayer throughout our state, throughout our nation. And thank you for being the local leader to make this happen. If you would like to make some remarks, please do so. Thank you so much. You don't know how much it uh, pleases me that you all would do this for us. And we will gather Friday at 12 o'clock to pray for one hour at the courthouse, the gazebo area. All of you are invited to come and be there and join with us as we pray. I do have a few flyers if you would like to take one to remind you uh, in case that you can come and be there with us. Would Thank you. Like you. For me to leave them right Please, here? you can just give them to our, our clerk. All right. Thank you all so okay. much. Thank you. And thank you for your presence here. At 945, uh, we will gather for the official ceremonies uh, right here at the Putnam County Complex. Um, uh, near the uh, sign at the Creole entrance entrance and then 12 noon for those who are participating in the prayer vigil uh, we will meet at the courthouse gazebo and at 6 o'clock p.m. at the Mount Tabor Church that's when uh, the honor local heroes uh, services will be hosted okay item 5 proclamation national senior citizen month Angie Wisnett from our parks and recreation uh, our director Commissioner Libel will be presenting uh, this proclamation as well. Thank you. Okay, recognizing National Senior Center Month. Whereas senior recreation centers are a community focal point for senior citizens, providing a place where they can come together for services and activities that support their independence and involvement in the community and respond to their needs and interests. And whereas senior center Recreation centers offer services and information to connect senior citizens and their families to vital resources. And whereas senior recreation centers provide health and wellness programs 
nutrition services, educational and recreational activities, arts and humanity programs, computer education programs, and fitness programs. And whereas senior recreation centers enable senior citizens to contribute to their own health and well-being and participate in stimulating social opportunities that allow them to remain positive, vibrant members of their communities. And now, therefore, be it proclaimed that the Putnam County Board of Commissioners hereby recognizes September 2015 National Senior Center Month in Putnam County and calls upon all citizens to recognize the special contributions of all senior center participants and the special efforts of the staff and volunteers who work every day to enhance the well-being of older citizens in our community. Done, ordered, and adopted this eighth day of September 2015. And I'd like to offer that in the way of a motion, Mr. Chairman. Second. Thank you, Commissioner Michael. We do have a proper motion and a second uh, for the approval of the proclamation recognizing National Senior Center Month. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 <laughs> like sign, um, the motion carries unanimously. Thank you so much for your leadership, Madam Director. Thank you for your sensitivity to the needs of our seniors uh, every day. Uh, but it's very, very uh, warm and heartfelt to know that we're recognizing uh, and set setting aside this designated month. So would you please care to have some comments? Mm -hmm. so. Happy to accept this proclamation on behalf of all the senior service providers within our county and to continue to serve our current seniors and all of our future generations of seniors in the community. So thank you very much. And we have a new center, I understand. We do have one coming on board in the next few months, yes, sir. Good deal. Okay. Looking forward to that. Thank you. Absolutely. So are we. Okay. And again, thank you so much for your leadership. Merrill Senior Community Center, uh, Jonathan Leslie, Institute for Workforce Innovation, Commissioner Harvey. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Putnam County Proclamation number 2015-55, recognizing Melrose Senior Community Center. Whereas older Americans are significant members of our society, investing their wisdom and experience to help enrich and better the lives of younger generations. And whereas the Melrose Senior Community Center has acted as a catalyst for mobilizing the creativity, energy, vitality, and commitment of the older residents of Melrose, Florida. And whereas through the wide array of services, programs, and activity, senior centers empower older citizens of Putnam County to contribute to their own health and well-being and the health and well-being of the fellow citizens of all ages. And whereas the Melrose Senior Community Center in Melrose, Florida, affirms the dignity, self-worth, and independence of older persons by facilitating their decisions and actions, <coughs> tapping their experiences, skills, and knowledge and enabling their continued contributions to the community. Now therefore, be it proclaimed that the Putnam County Board of County Commissioners hereby recognizes September 2015 National Senior Center Month in Putnam County and calls upon all citizens to recognize the special contributions of senior center participants at the Melrose Senior Community Center and the special efforts of the staff and volunteers who work <coughs> every day to enhance the well-being of the older citizens of our community, done, order, and adopted this eighth day of September 2015. Mr. Chairman, I move approval. Proper motion Second. by Commissioner Harvey, second by Commissioner Libel. <coughs> the discussion. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none, motion carries. Thank you, Mr. Leslie, for being here. Thank you for your leadership uh, in the Senior Center in, in Melrose area, and uh, we just appreciate uh, the various things that so many take for granted that uh, you all are providing. So if you would care to make some statements, uh, Thank you we certainly much. would like for you to do so. Uh, on behalf of all the seniors that we serve in the Melrose um, community, are all of our volunteers and staff, I'd like to thank um, each of the commissioners for their support and for this proclamation. It's very much appreciated. And uh, we look forward to serving seniors for many years to come. Thank, thank you. you very much. Thank okay. you. Thank you again uh, for your leadership. <clears throat> Commissioner's item six on the agenda is uh, calling for Bill Henderson from the Florida Department of Transportation uh, to present uh, the county work program priorities. Mr. Bill Henderson, good to see you this morning. We look forward to your visit. Always. Always. <laughs> Always have to bring something. <laughs> I have a lot today. Well, we appreciate what you're bringing. That's right. <laughs> <coughs> I'm good. 
Good morning. My name is Bill Henderson. I'm with the Florida Department of Transportation. Um, as y'all know, I was here back in May, and we normally like to do our visits twice a year. <coughs> and we normally, when we come back, we usually come in November. But as y'all probably know, the legislature is starting in January this year instead of March. Well, the DOT being a big organization, we have our deadlines and stuff that are tied to that date and so what we normally do in december we have to do in october this year so we're playing a lot of catch up <laughs> but what i wanted to come here today for more than anything is invite you to our work program public hearing which will be um october the 6th up in jacksonville at our training center um, we hold these every year and um, we normally do putnam county up in jacksonville and it's going to be a little different this year it's going to be more a little more um informal we're going to have um, each county will have their own station, and we invite you to come up and talk about your individual county. Um, we're also going to have a lot of our upper management folks there, um, our directors and um, our construction people, our traffic ops people. We'll have a lot of our specialists there, so it'll give you a chance to ask a lot of questions. Um, I do not have the, I usually pass out what we call the citizen's plan, which we normally have. But I, I have the old one, but I didn't want to pass it out because it's being updated right now. And if you look on the handout I gave you, we have a website for our work program. And I would expect this week or next week that will be, the new information will be on there for the new projects that we're going to be talking about at the workshop. Of course, we'll have it by October 6th. And um, that's really about it. Oh, also, um, I think I told you last time that Jordan Green, who was our liaison for Putnam County, for, he is no longer in that role. He's still with the department, but he's in another role. And I, we are in the process of getting a new Putnam County liaison, which should happen hopefully pretty soon. So I'll let y'all know when that um, position comes in. And um, I understand the US 17 project, which we've been anxiously waiting, is now under construction from the end of the four lane there in San Mateo down south. Hopefully, um, we'll get, ultimately get it built all the way to Satsuma, and then we'll continue working down to the Volusia County line. And Commissioner Harvey's favorite project, State Road 20, um, we are, as I've reported in May, we are actively buying right away out there, and that seems to be going very smoothly we picked up some more parcels and that process is going pretty good and hopefully we'll be ready to let that in um 19. that's really all i had today so if anybody got any questions or comments or think you want me to take back with me any comments commissioners how about a round of applause thank you, <laughs> yeah. thank you. again want to thank you for your leadership um, in keeping us connected uh in this uh district uh, we're very uh, pleased with uh, the relationship that has been built over the years and I encourage all of my colleagues uh, to mark the date the time the place so that we can be together and do what we do best and that's represent our community uh, for this public hearing because the five-year work program is extremely important and in order for us to uh, to stay on the front uh, line and to accomplish the things that needs to happen uh, throughout this particular season, uh, we certainly need to be there. And um, thank you so much. Please give uh, our regards to the district secretary, who is very, very sensitive to the needs of our county. Uh, there he's made it known each time, Mr. Evans, each time that he's been uh, here uh, in the county, uh, he's been very, very uh, representative of what, what rural needs, and, and he knows that one size does not fit all. So thank you, and uh, we look forward to seeing you, if not before. Just one question, Mr. Bill. Um, when take for instance Highway 20 and it's in its uh, acquisition stages, is it considered in the five-year program oh, at this absolutely. point? Oh, absolutely. So a, it is. It's, a, uh, it's adopted. I think when I was here in May for um, 19. But if we can get the, maybe we can move it in if we get the right of way. But it's a very high priority with us. It's been around a long time, as <laughs> Commissioner Harvey knows, and. So, I really look forward to getting this thing <laughs> constructed, but once we got the right of way going, that means it's it's going. So I, I feel pretty confident. So if it were to wrap up early, say, construction would begin early. Is that fair if to say? If we find the money, what what happens is um, if you what we call having a project on the shelf or production ready, that means all the right of ways bought. If for some chance some money from another part of the state becomes available, mm -hmm. we'd be ready to grab it. And that's kind of what we're looking for. But right now, the money is set in 19. 
fiscal year 19. Good deal. Thank you. Okay. That sounds like a long way off, but it's just around the corner, really. Yes. Yes, with all of the uh, preparation and engineering. District. Thank you. Um, I am the chair, the uh, commissioner for District 1 and the work's going on on uh, Highway 17. And, you know, we talk about it and we go on and on, but when you ride down the road and you actually look at how wide that right-of-way is and the clearing that's going on, I mean, it takes your breath away. Right. It's a huge project. We're so glad to see it on the ground and things being done. Thank you. Yeah, 17, that's the other one. And, it, and one day I was driving down here on 100, you know, coming from Lakes, and I'm thinking, we're going to have to start thinking about 100. <laughs> there was quite a bit of traffic on there this morning. Right. So that would probably be the, you know, once we get 20 done and 17 done, I imagine 100 will be the next one we start looking Sing at. Sing our song. We yes. Want to hear <laughs> By all means, uh, the infrastructure uh, needs to move traffic uh, has a direct uh, relationship with us uh, developing the economic muscle that we need to bring the proper jobs and industry into our community because moving goods and services, I mean, time is of essence. So thank you so much. Okay. Thank you for being here. Okay. okay. Uh, next on the agenda is, is item seven, uh, public comments, and we want all of our citizens to feel comfortable coming before us. Uh, sharing uh, information and bringing matters to our attention. Uh, the board uh, will not be engaging uh, in debate or deliberation unless we have uh, prior information um, on the subject and that we can dis uh, discuss it uh, with, uh, with understanding. We ask that you limit your comments uh, to three minutes, uh, please, uh, and unless there is an emergency uh, declared, uh, we will not engage in deliberation. Also ask that if you have an opinion, please state it as if it is your opinion rather than it being um, fact. Uh, comment cards are placed conveniently at both entr entrance ways coming in. Uh, please feel free to fill that information out. And it's mainly for the abilities to contact you concerning any commentary you make uh, for clarification or for follow-up uh, if in the event staff needs to, um, to reach you. So at this time, uh, inf Please come to discuss any issue that is not on the agenda. If you fill out a card um, and you stated specific areas on the agenda, please hold those comments until we get to that area. First speaker uh, this morning is uh, Mr. Rick Haven. Good morning, Mr. Haven. Good morning and thank you. Uh, my first question is, I got this in an email. I've attended most of the meetings and I don't remember that we ever voted on charging for household garbage and horticultural trash construction at the Crescent City and when do we do this? Yes, sir. Uh, Mr. Gass, will you just give us a, a brief synopsis of of uh, the uh, October 1st uh, policy updates um, as it relates to um, the official action that this board took. Um, we had an uh, intense discussion uh, so that citizens will realize that the services that they're already paying for, for uh, pickup at their respective homes, that uh, you're not being charged extra, you just want to maximize the services that, you, that you're already paying for. Mr. Gass, do you want to say it in a different form? Yes, basically what it was, we had the discussion with the board uh, that the citizens pay in their assessment to have their waste picked up at their house by a contractor. And by doing this, everything's paid for and handled. When they carry their waste to a convenience center or they carry their waste to the landfill, it is increasing the cost that's associated with the solid waste assessment by allowing them to put it at the curbside, have it picked up at the curbside, and anybody who brings waste to the convenience center or to the landfill for their convenience would then pay for it. This would make it more economical and more efficient for our operation to work. Thank you, Mr. Gass. Mr. Could, Chairman, Mr. Gass, can <clears throat> you explain, I noticed uh, on social media that they seem to emphasize the $44 a ton and of course the tire charges as well. Can you give an average price 
to say a pickup tr truck of yard debris? Um, a standard pickup truck uh, filled to the uh, back window mm -hmm. would be approximately two yards. And that would cost what in your estimate? Eight dollars. <laughs> yeah. And then <coughs> household gar a couple bags. It's uh, say four bags of garbage. Five dollars. Four bags of garbage would probably be around six to seven dollars. Okay. That's Depending what, on the weight, and if it went to the convenience center, some, it would some be done by volume. Some folks think that it's a forty-four dollar charge. No, and it's not. It, there, there's a five dollar minimum charge, yeah. and that's to handle the paperwork and everything that has to be done when they come across the scales. Um, you know, and they you, bring, it's fair to say you have employees in an overtime situation on those weekends out there, or is it, it put a strain on the uh, the payroll? Yes, okay. Mr. Chairman. Mr. Harvey. Mr. Guest. It's also fair to say we didn't really vote on that because the bottom line, these fees have been enacted a long time ago. We just weren't really enforcing that, correct? Or we, in some areas we were, but, but we were getting a lot of out of town people coming to Putnam County to dump at that's, the cost of the Putnam County residents. That's, that's correct. And also the, the board voted to uh, look at accepting waste from outside the county. And this is the way to make sure that people aren't trying to sneak in right. and take advantage of the people of Putnam County once we accept, say we are going to accept waste from outside the county. This is a safeguard to help protect the citizens. And you know, Mr. Gass, this has been a learning curve for me because all, I'm sure all of us grew up here. Remember Saturdays you went to the dump and you loaded up the truck and that's what you did. Uh, but we don't have to do that anymore. And I've been putting my stuff out by the curb and it's being picked up and I'm paying for that under my solid waste assessment. So it's a learning curve for me as well as everybody else. So I think we're gonna, we got a few more things, we gotta work out some bugs, but we'll get to that. We, we have a question and answer um, pamphlet that we're handing out at the convenience centers and at the, the landfill if anybody has any questions. Uh, we're getting a Spanish version um, double checked and we'll, we'll have those available also and we're going to post them on the website so that people can go through and a lot of that will answer their questions. If they have any questions, please feel free to contact my office. I'm willing to talk with anybody and everybody about it and make sure that this is a, a smooth transition. But Mr. One of, big, one of the big things that we've had a problem with is for years and years, we've accepted stuff that according to the ordinance we're not supposed to take for free. The ordinance does not allow for tree removal, land clearing debris, all that kind of stuff that comes in. And there are entities that have been doing that on a regular basis, uh, despite the ordinance saying that we don't take that right. as so, part of the assessment. Well, it's fair to say, too, that this is going to drive the cost down to the citizens of Putnam County. It is going to make it more efficient and more economical for the citizens of the county. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Commissioner. Pellicier. Uh, Mr. Gass, will the citizens still be able to uh, dispose of four automobile tires a year for free? Yes. They will. And the solid, uh, the um, household hazardous waste, the oil, that kind of stuff is not in included. It's just the disposal of waste. Those things aren't classified as waste, so, you know, your recycling efforts will, will still be uh, taken free of charge. Just make sure that once everything is um, on the website that we look at it thoroughly from both ends so that it's citizen friendly um, and that it does, you know, make sense uh, to the average citizen and then obviously the contact number as a backup. Yes, sir. Did that answer most of your questions, Mr. Haven? No, I've got some more. I see that, that, did that answer that subject? I guess, much? yes. Okay, thank you so much. Thank you, Mr. Gass. <clears throat> uh, for some time, I've been, over at least a couple of years, been looking at the financial statements that you guys issue, and I've had questions in the past. As it wasn't until I looked at uh, Walt's financial statement, and he was the only one that actually followed the directions and put in the W-2s. Uh, you can go online, and, and a matter of fact, I had this conversation with Mr. Jones over the internet 
last week uh, where the state mandates what your salaries are each year mm -hmm. and what you guys report isn't close to what they were. I asked him for an explanation. He didn't have one. It wasn't until I said, you know, I looked at Walt's and he included his W-2. So I'm wondering why the, the county's not paying you what you're supposed to be getting. It's six to $8,000 difference depending on who, who it is. See there at the top is the bold for each year, yes, what sir. you're supposed to be getting paid. And then below, crossing your name is what you've. Each, each individual have elected, uh, whether it's medical coverage and various things, there may be some pre-tax uh, benefits uh, that any employee, uh, and that's a relationship between the employee and the employer uh, there. So to get down to the specifics, of a person appearing to be underpaid, I would probably be more alarmed if any of us were overpaid um, as it relates to that. Thank you for bringing this to our attention, and I'm sure there are some explanations uh, that can be given, but uh, the only clear explanation that I would be aware of would, would precisely be whether or not a person had any uh, pre-tax plans uh, you know, related to uh, their specific uh, income. Well, whether it was a pre-tax plan or not, wouldn't that be still part of the gross salary? Well, whatever, whatever the W-2 says, uh, under normal circumstances, it should be accurate. Thank you for bringing this information to us, and we'll make sure that it's passed on. Will you get back to me with where? Yes, sir, we where, can do that. Because, you know. Yes, sir, we can certainly do that. <clears throat> administration, please. I guess, and then I'll, I had questions on D and F. Yes, sir, we'll call, we'll call you back up for that. All right. Thank you so much. Ms. Faye Sparkman, you're the next speaker, 103 Flamingo Boulevard in Tularkin. Good morning. Good morning. I just have a couple of things. Could you please tell us when we're going to start seeing mowing again? <laughs> and also, what is the latest status on getting County Road 315 done? Because now with all the rain, there are more pieces breaking out. And so we'd like an answer to those two questions. And my last thing is, at the last meeting, when I brought up that I had went to Mr. Van Zandt's town hall meeting, Mr. Lyle got angry with me for bringing it up, although our newspaper reporter was there and heard everything that was said. So I believe if we have to come up here, and I respect all of you, do I agree with what you do sometimes? No. But when I come up here with respect, I think I deserve it back. And at the last meeting, I did not get it, Mr. Reliable. So I think that you owe me a public apology. Um, explain the, the deal. I don't, Mr. Van Zandt's town hall meeting and what Remember, now? I brought it up that he said he brought a business here, and you sat straight up in that street, and you said, I've had enough now. I didn't deserve that. I've never treated you with disrespect, and I think you need to treat me with respect. Let's back up again. Now, you, you said you brought a visitor no, I went to Mr. Van Zandt's town hall meeting and I was telling you all what was said. Pull that and microphone real close. There you when go. I told you all what Mr. Van Zandt said at the meeting about getting an airplane plant here, you got mad. You I, sat straight up in that seat and said that wasn't true. If I offended you, I apologize, but I, I assure you I was not mad. I'm not sure okay, what. Okay, well, I'm telling you, when we get up here, I've never treated any of you with disrespect, not the first time. And so I think when we're up here asking a question or telling you what we hear at a meeting, I think we deserve the same thing back when we're standing here. That's all I'm asking for. Okay, it goes both ways. Thank you. Yes, and I do respect everybody. Thank you. Okay, thank you so much. Uh, Public Works is working uh, diligently on uh, the mowing, and we know that it is a very uh, complex uh, issue because there are some mowing that takes place by contractors. There are other mowing that takes place uh, through the department, and uh, they are working on that, and, and we will have that where it's presentable and even understandable uh, in the days to come. Uh, some of you who have been participating in the meetings uh, do understand uh, that we have had some contract issues that, that we're working through. So we ask for your patience and your understanding uh, and Public Works will be giving all of us an update in the transportation meeting on the um, uh, fourth Tuesday. 
Next speaker is Mr. Robert Bly. I'll get to you in just a moment. I'm going through all the cards first. Uh, Reverend Kamor, Mr. Bly, you're the next speaker. Um, is your, is your um, you've got two different issues here. One is related to animal control and one is item K. We'll call you when we get ready to discuss K. Robert Bly, 116 Sand Lake Drive, Pomona Park, Florida. Um, Recently, you know, animal control is underfunded, overworked, and in my opinion, could use some help. Uh, the, those of us who care about animals do volunteer out there. Um, I've only been out there once myself, but uh, I came out there when we had the big uh, 54 dogs uh, that were taken. Um, this has happened more than once, and uh, a lot of that problem arises because we don't have a spay and neuter program that people can afford. And I know in the future we're going to have to. In order to keep the population of animals down, we've got to find a way to spay and neuter them. And most of the people that keep these animals are poor. They're their family and uh, they can't afford to go and take them and, and get them spayed and neutered, so we have to find a way. Uh, one of my issues out there right now is that there are animals that are listed for euthanization on Wednesday, and they would be euthanized on Friday. So that gives the uh, people 48 hours, roughly, to get those animals out of the shelter before they're killed. There are also some, I mean, uh, I think they kill them at noon. So anyway, what I'd like to see happen out there is the kill list being put out on Monday for the animals that are going to be killed on Friday. The other thing I'd like to see is that the county open up the adoption center and put those animals that are going to be killed on Friday at the adoption center during the week, at least one day during the week. That's never happened. So I'd like to see that happen so that we can at least say that we tried to get rid of these animals. And the last thing I would like to see happen, right now we have to have adoption centers come out there and pick those animals up, a lot of those animals. Uh, there's a lot of paperwork to go through and people who are willing to adopt will do that. But there's also a big fee. Now if you're going to kill a dog anyway, why not go ahead and let them have the dog, waive the fee, Make sure that they spay or neuter, whatever that is, keep up with it, but waive the fee for a dog that you're going to kill anyway. Why would we want to, I mean, people love animals, so they're willing to do what they have to do to go out and get them animals before they get killed. But if someone would have taken an animal, had it not been so expensive, they couldn't afford to, uh, if you waive the fee for that person, it, it might help to get rid of some animals and we wouldn't have to kill them. We're really getting a bad reputation here. We've, we've had it. I mean, we have a lot of breeders out here. Uh, they're irresponsible, and they, they, I think they just love their animals. But uh, they are irresponsible as far as letting them get out of control, getting too many of them, and causing a problem for the county, and it's an expensive problem. So I, I feel like this would help to alleviate some of that problem. Thank you, Mr. Bly. Commissioner Leibel. Um, we just received, uh, Brian or John, do you want, you want to speak to this, any of you? Uh, the, we have a $15,000 grant we just received for spay neuter, and uh, Brian will elaborate more that we're always seeking those grants to be able to deal with that poor population you're talking about, Mr. Bly. And um, it will go a long way, and through that, uh, monies we'll be able to offer free adoptions, and we currently are to a point. And Brian, if you want to elaborate further on it and we did uh, receive a fifteen thousand dollar grant from the spay neuter license plate um, that we will be instituting very shortly it is uh, the way the grant was written it is largely uh, oriented toward income limited folks um, spay and neuter uh, it helps pay that cost uh, i'm not sure that that is all the cost but it's close and as far as the centers open, uh, as the uh, new year comes, October 1st for government, and 
Mr. Hammonds and Planning Development has done a wonderful job <coughs> the last uh, 10 months taking this organization over from scratch with no budget and through donations and, and a great effort by volunteers and his staff, a lot of overtime, they've dealt with a lot of adverse conditions. And um, opening the Adoption Center is a step in the right direction. Um, I'm happy to say that we will be moving that Adoption Center down to uh, main Highway 17 for a higher traffic count. We have approximately about 35,000 cars a day that pass through that corridor and we hope that the more visibility we create by that move will uh, lead to further uh, more adoptions in that deal. Um, this week we had a no-kill week uh, other than one aggressive dog, but the ones that were deemed to be put down were all rescued. We turned the cages over Friday uh, twice. Well, they, they got, I think, five dogs out and we had to go get more dogs. So the effort is working. Um, as we get better with uh, our advertising and, and more visibility and a, a more visible place, I think you're going to see this thing get turned around for the betterment of the animals. There are a lot of people pulling in the direction to go no kill. And uh, we can't get there yet, but it'll be a slow process. Some people would like to see it overnight, and it's just not reality. As Brian says, animal control means just that. When we have uh, vicious dogs and dangerous dogs roaming the street. Our job as government is to make the public safe first and foremost. After that, other efforts are considered. But that is our main, our core mission. Thank you, Commissioner Leibold. Again, um, Mr. Blythe, uh, thank you for sharing uh, your, your opinion and your observations there. You said two key words uh, in your opening, underfunded, overworked. Yeah. You can put any department that you want as a label with those words to follow. Uh, although uh, oftentimes our, our citizens can't fully appreciate uh, all of the workshops and the discussions to try to streamline and to maximize um, the citizens' dollar is happening, is happening each day. Um, we, we, we are in some situations that we didn't ask to be in as it relates to uh, our local economics. However, uh, we're not having any pity parties. You know, we're, we're doing all that we know to do, uh, and when our citizens step up with positive feedback, uh, it only enhances the process. So thank you again for your comments. Yes, sir. A final plug, uh, any member of the public that is interested in that program, we do have brochures available for it. Thank you. Uh, they can contact our department at Planning and Development. Thank you so very much, sir. Okay, Reverend Kimor. Any other citizens that uh, plan to speak, please uh, prepare yourselves. Uh, we would prefer you to fill out comment cards. However, it is not mandatory. Thank you. Yes, sir. Leroy Camo, 117 Gladys Avenue, East Balaka, Florida. On the first Tuesday of last month, I was in here with the uh, plea for you to cut the grass down on Yeverton Road yes, sir. by uh, Mount Tabor Church Road. Now, this week, we didn't even care a car there. We drove a big van. And with the big van, you cannot see over them bushes to get on the highway. And everybody don't drive down Yeverton Road at 45 miles an hour. And with that van, it's, you're sitting over the front tire. You still got to get out in the road before you can see what's coming. And this will be my second time in here asking, if something was to happen, it's going to make the county liable. I'm quite sure. And I'd appreciate it, Mr. Flagg, in your spare time, if you would just drive out there and just turn down Mount Table Church Road. Yes, sir. And go down there and try to get back out. Yes, sir. Even in your car. You'll see what I'm talking about. Yes, sir. You got to get in the road before you can see because everything inside the bushes is so high. Yes, sir. You can't see out the van. The bushes just that high side the road. I know you touched on it just a minute ago, but what's happening with your grass cutters? 
They well, don't retire? No, sir. Um, some may be retired uh, before the end of the day, but uh, there are different zones, and so there are different issues uh, there. And you know as well as I do, when a situation goes on and on and on, and there is not chronological uh, progress being made, then there's what you call catch up. And catch up is not an easy thing, but you have brought that to our attention. Public Works is over here in this conversation, and they're going to hear the conversation right. again. Uh, uh, before the day is over because they're going to be giving us some feedback uh, now, on that. I did not go down this morning and file another work order. No, you didn't have to file another work order. I filed one first Tuesday of yes, last. Sir. Yes, one. sir. Yes, you've done all you need to do to bring it to our attention. It's, it's the ball is in our court now. Thank you, sir. Thank you so very much for your presence. Don't drop it now. No, don't drop it. No fumbling. No fumbling. Yes, sir. Thank you, Reverend, for that reminder. <laughs> Mr. John Spell, you're next. Good morning, sir. John Spells, 106 Citrus Lane. And I've been, yeah, you're going to hear it again on this grass. I was riding down Crocker Swamp the other day, and they was out there mowing the grass. It's really a shame to actually attempt to cut grass and as tall as it is. When they left from over that grass right by Robert Rebel's farm, that grass was still over six inches tall. And I don't understand why would you even waste the time and the fuel to it attempt to cut grass when you're going to have the more up that high. And like I said many a times, if y'all really want to see how a place look, right in the St. John County. I went to Salt Spring the other day and I come back and I could tell when I got back to Putnam County. You look at the nature trail and I know most of you going back and forth to the road department. They got out there about a week or two ago with a riding moor and they just zigzagging and cutting the bushes standing back up behind the moor. Why don't this county take pride in the work that they do? Go down West River Road. Y'all just had that road paved and none of the drivers way entrances match the driveway they started with the asphalt past the driveway and then go to the other side and it don't make sense you look how the shoulders of the road look the rain been washing I had to put dirt in front of my friend's mailbox yesterday because the water is eroding the shoulders of the road nobody cleaning no ditches I look at the road grader sitting at the road department it been parked out there in the front now for about three weeks as if there's no one to operate it this county is just going down the drain I went out to Hunter Road the other day right there in front of my mother's place there's a 42 inch pipe coming underneath the road about 10 years ago, they put an 18-inch pipe under the cemetery road. Every time the water, the rain comes from 20 on the Hunter Road, 18 inches of water go through the pipe and the rest of it go across the road. They, got a, they had a barricade out there the other day, and I asked you all once before, how many engineers do the county actually have? Because I don't understand how can you have enough engineers and you can ride through the county, a nobody like me, and can see just how down the drain it go. You take 309. Now, how long has it been when they paved that road, but now they're out there tearing it up, putting drains in? Don't nobody think ahead of time on doing things instead of wasting taxpayers' money, repeating the same old stuff? It's nice to ride down a road that's smooth, but to pave a road and then rip it up, then put a speed bump, it just don't make sense. So, you know, y'all got to take a little more priority in what y'all doing rather than setting up here being legislators. Ride out there and look at this stuff. The mosquitoes so bad in East Palakala and that tall grass, after dark you got to go in the house. But every time we've been coming to the meeting asking what's going on with the mowing, there's always some band-aid excuse, but throughout the whole county they just skip around and and really, y'all said we're supposed to get from three to four cuttings a year. There's some areas that hadn't even been cut in their time this year. So somebody getting cheated. We do recognize the discrepancies and the deficiencies throughout the county. Um, the Public Works is working diligently to correct those things. Anything that you brought to us that has not been brought directly to them, please do that. Uh, we don't have a problem of being accountable. And then furthermore, we do take pride in this county. Uh, I can't I, tell. Well, again, you can look from the outside in and have an opinion, but I'm looking from the inside out, and I know that I personally take pride uh, in this county, and uh, we go right back to law of supply and demand. If you don't have the money, you certainly can't pay the piper. And so the truth of the whole matter is we are making efforts. What you're telling us is not falling on deaf ears. We're listening, and not only are we listening, Public Works is trying to find the best efficient way 
to make some things happen. Now, again, whether we were understaffed, whether the contractor defaulted, it's a lot of different reasons for the various different issues that one may bring up uh, not happening uh, that should have happened. And so check and balance is in place. Uh, staffing uh, is being assigned to high priority areas and things of that nature. Now, when a person is cutting six inches of, of grass, I don't know whether the, the wet conditions create uh, 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 the need for them to raise uh, the height. Again, I'm, I'm not a, a lawn uh, expert, but I do know that I have confidence in the organizational structure that we have going on right now in public works, and we're just asking for patience so that we can get this thing back in check. And that's, that's pretty much where we are, Mr. Spell, Mr. Pellicier. Uh, to answer your question about staffing, as of about 10 days ago, we were eight people short. Is that right, Mr. Bosco? Yeah, we're eight people short. Well, what I can understand is, you know, I noticed none of y'all seem to be leaving y'all job, but the people leaving the job. So apparently there must be a problem with the money because, you know, it looked like the ones that's doing the work ain't getting nothing for the work, but the ones that just legislating the work actually ain't leaving their job. So apparently you might need to kind of pay the people for the work because hey, let's stay on what point. it looked like, let's, you know. Let's, it, let's stay on point, Mr. Spell, uh, as it relates to well, that. Well, I'm, I'm going to give it a point. We don't set our salaries. We do not set our salaries. I ain't say y'all set your salary, okay. but in other words, sometimes when those people are out there putting effort into that's, what they're doing, they want to be paid Mr. for Spell. it. Let's keep this in check. We're not going to debate. That's not what we're here for. The concerns that you brought are recorded, and we're going to do what we need to do. And I'm asking the audience to please do that same respect thing that was just discussed. Um, the issues that you bring and all of our other citizens are bringing to us is not falling on deaf ears. Uh, we're doing what we know need to be done uh, with what we have to work with. And you're going to see change. But it, if, if, if we could wave the magic wand and make it happen in one day, we would do that. It's been an extended amount of time. Nobody is in denial about that. However, uh, we are working, and we're working on the various things that you're bringing up. We are working on it. Okay, well, I'll just watch everybody kick the can further down the road. Thank you, Mr. Spell, for your commentary. Is there any other public comments to come before this commission? We'll move to uh, item eight, which is the consent agenda. Uh, there are some items on the consent agenda uh, that uh, staff is going to elaborate on. I'm going to read the captions for each of those, and then we will raise uh, the ones that uh, will uh, require some informational uh, elaboration. Item 8A is the list of committee minutes recommendations distributed to become part of the record. B is the list of correspondence distributed uh, to become part of the record. C is reappointment, Affordable Housing Advisory Committee, District 4 Representative, Ms. Faye Sparkman. D, Administration, Florida Department of Health Contract for Fiscal Year 15-16, not to exceed $229,200 for operation of the Putnam County Health Department through September 30th, 2016. E, Public Works, Change Order Number 1, Halifax Paving Incorporated, 103-day time increase, County Road 209, West River Road, Milling and Resurfacing Project. F, Sheriff. Fiscal year 2015, FDLE Edward Byrne Memorial Justice Assistant Grant Application, $13,239 to purchase equipment for the Corrections Response Team. G Public Works Division of Emergency Management Subgrant, $243,990 Hazard Mitigation Grant Program for Wilaka Front Street Drainage Project Phase 2. Uh, uh, Public Works H Public Works. RFQ 15-12, approved short list of qualified professional engineering consultants for continuing services contract. I, Public Works, bid 1514 awards, Art Walker and V.E. Whitehurst and Sons Incorporated, $562,547.16. Road resurfacing projects for 2015, Area 1 is $219,790, Area 2, $342,757.16, respectively. Item J, Public Works Division of Emergency Management Subgrant Agreement Modification, $2,475 Tolls Road Outfall Drainage Project. K, Emergency Services Triton Consulting Group, LLC, $12,800, Completion of Critical Infrastructure Assessments, and again, it's a Homeland Security Grant. Item L, from the Legal Department, Renewal of Health Care Contract with Stuart Marchman, Providing Substance Abuse Treatment Services to the Putnam County Adult Drug, Drug Court Operation. Item M, Administration General Fund, Animal Control Budget Amendment Resolution, $15,000 to record revenue and allow for the expenditure of Florida Animal Friends Incorporated Spay Neuter Grant. 
uh, I have pretty much asked for D, F, K, and L to be elaborated upon. Are there any others, commissioners, that you would like uh, further discussion on? Uh, aye for me. Aye. Chairman. Okay. Any others? <coughs> okay. I'm going to call Mrs. Garcia, uh, Florida Department of Health contract not to exceed $229,200. If you'll give us just a synopsis uh, there, we've read the details, but for the benefit of the public, uh, if you could just give us a synopsis of that. I'd be happy to. Thank you. Thank you so um, much. The Florida Department of Health uh, always contracts with the counties that we live in. Uh, we um, support and protect the citizens of, the, of Putnam County. Our major mission is to uh, preserve, protect, and, and educate the citizens of Putnam County. Um, these funds are um, a part of, I think most people believe the, uh, that the state provides funding um, for the health department. They provide a small amount of funding. Most of the funding is raised um, in-house uh, with fees and grants. Um, and so we are uh, appreciate each dollar that the um, county provides. I'd like to point out on page, um, I believe it's page eight, um, the in-kind that we bring back to Putnam County um, and some of the services that we provide. Um, page five of attachment two, part two. Uh, and um, and in kind that we bring in, that is no cost to the citizens of Putnam County. Our ADAP program, um, $200,000. Our pharmacy drug program, where we provide uh, free of cost. Um, it's this one looking like this. Oh, it's not that one. Uh -huh. it's it's Mary, five, page five of 11. Our pages are different than yours. Oh, so. I apologize. That's it, page 28 in your packet, <laughs> Commissioner. 28. Page 28. Okay. Thank you. I'll just read them so that it's not a problem. I think most importantly is our WIC program where we bring in um, over $2 million in um, food products that are purchased actually through our WIC program in our local stores in Putnam County. And um, uh, Bureau of Immunizations and Laboratory work that we do for the citizens. Um, your funds help pay for items that have no funding um, for us, which is surveillance, um, our treatment for TB clients and um, items that really receive no funding, protection of your water and your sewer systems and your septic systems. Okay. Uh, again, we do understand the, the needs of this community is a mirror for the health department. The needs of the community is the needs of the health department. The health department is not an entity within itself mm -hmm. uh, that does not reflect the, the dire needs of, of many of our citizens. And at the end of the day, uh, we are as well as the health department is. And so we certainly do recognize the importance of that. Mr. Rick Haven, you had some specific questions uh, related to the uh, health department. Please come forward. I had some questions about some of the things, uh, page 30 in your packet, we got $63,950 for immunizations, uh, this is fees that they're asking from the county, uh, $38,540 for sexually transmitted disease, uh, HIV AIDS prevention, $5,216, there was an AIDS patient care thing for $38,009. Uh, try and what the other one was. <clears throat> Ms. Garcia, in her submission to you, s says that, uh, states uh, to uh, Florida State Statutes 381 and 384, all those are are talking about the re the reporting process. It doesn't have anything to do with the county supporting these funds. It states what the state is supposed to do with recording that information on incidences. When everybody's supposed to have Obamacare now, why are we putting out of the things I had an objection to was over a hundred thousand dollars? Why are the P Putnam County taxpayers? being assessed for paying this again and again and again. Okay, let's make sure that your question does not provide the answer. You have a question as to 
how it's allocated, where the funds are coming from. Let's let the expert address that before you decide that the taxpayers are paying it. Ms. Okay. Garcia, will you come back, please? I'd be happy to. And um, this is an, an, an interesting form. Excuse me, I'm not that tall. Um, this form that you're actually talking yeah, about. Yeah, just address us. He'll hear you. The, the, the form that he's talking about actually weighs what is, um, count, what is related to the state. So, if, for example, if we have a grant of our own that we received in Putnam County, it actually counts as a county funding. It is actually not your funding, per right. se. But because of the nature of the funding, we allocate it based on state revenues versus, um, versus county revenues. If we were able to charge a fee for a septic tank installation, that allocation then goes on the county side because those were raised on the county side. We become the agency for yes, any sir. grant that comes through Putnam County becomes the funding agency per se and the money comes through uh, the county to for it's, disbursement It's earmarked purposes. as being part of the county and the resources that have come to the health department that are allocated to the county side. The state side would be funding that comes from the state, grants that the state provides, and so it's a method of allocation. If you look, uh, certainly the numbers that are accounted to the state and the county side are millions as opposed to the 220, the 200,000 that you provide for us. So I just wanted to know it's a, it's a methodology of allocation where it reflects where those um, funds uh, res are resourced at. Thank so you, we Ms. may have received them. Hopefully Thank you, Ms. Garcia. It. Does that clear it up for you? It's a, no, sir. No, no sir. sir. It's, a, and I, it's actually to the benefit of Why the don't county. you all g exchange numbers and you can have that discussion? Right, well, I've got one more question. Okay. Then. Yes, sir. Uh, when we get down to page 31, uh, <coughs> recently there was an article in the newspaper that cancer and cancer-related deaths are the greatest health problem in Putnam County, and yet none of these are being addressed by you. Not, you know, the lead and heavy metals monitoring, uh, there wasn't any uh, air and water pollution, none of that. When that's let a major health concern, yes. the major health concern. Okay, let her step up to the mic again and, and address us on that, please. So I just want to remind you that this is funding that coming coming through and used in Putnam County. If there are resources that come to Putnam County from the state that I do not supervise, those are not captured here. Exactly. So we are, we have a breast and cervical program that really um, is, uh, wants to make sure that women have um, breast ma mammograms before sort of prevention. We work certainly really hard with our new uh, Putnam First Cancer Fund in Putnam County to make sure we educate individuals. Um, and it is one of the leading causes of concern in Putnam County. And uh, we do have, we're very fortunate to have resources in Putnam County that address that in our cancer center and our hospital but those items then would be addressed at a larger level at a state level and would not be reflected in this um, the in these figures okay. okay thank you very kindly you're very welcome thank okay. You. okay thank you so much mr. Haven uh, for bringing those issues to our attention uh, Wax public works please come forward and discuss uh, with us uh, the 103 day time increase on the West River Road milling and resurfacing project so that we have um, uh, clarification for the benefit of our citizens. Good morning. Good morning. The uh, West River Road project has several different um, elements that caused it to um, ask for the time extension. And in your package on page 37, it lists all the different elements that added up to 100, <coughs> excuse me, 103 days. Uh, the AT&T had to relocate their utilities along the road that we didn't expect and that took 22 days and there was a retrofit uh, change order that we asked for that asked for another 27 days that was um, part of the guardrail materials we had to order the guardrail materials and then there's a time to change the guardrail uh, that was in addition to the work that was originally requested on the road we saw this as an opportunity to change out the guardrail on the bridge so we're doing that so that was 27 and 30 days, respectively. Uh, there were some uh, time um, overruns with the subcontractors for the work that was being done. That was 24 days. In total, they add up to 103 days. Of Thank the you so much, Mr. Jakobovich. Uh, Mr. Tim Hotelling, were there any more specific questions other than what has been expressed that you um, would like for us to drill down on, sir? I'm, 
I've heard uh, rudimentary information that said that there was some quality control issues on that about uh, um, having to dig the road up and put culverts in and then not compacting it enough so it goes sort of sway back and I was just curious what uh, what y'all know about that I've heard that also but the culvert uh, installation as they were putting the culverts in that was part of the the job scope and that they were put in in accordance with the plan that the contractor laid out before he started the work okay. thank you very kindly mr. Jakovovich just stay up here if you yes, sir. until Sorry. we solve it please what I hear is they paved the whole road. Okay, talk in the mic, Mr. Hotelling. Talk I'm sorry. The mic. He they hear you they if paved the whole the road. Mic. They went back and had to dig it up again like they forgot what they were doing or something. And then they put the culverts in, and then they didn't adequately compact it. So issue one, did they not know they had to do culverts? Issue two, did they not know that they have to, to build a road right, you have to compact uh, roadbed and as we know from West Hollister there's good ways and really poor ways of building roads and I thought we were you know increasing I was okay, so you're raising a quality control issue but two, you do have two issues you have two documentary issues. documented facts that that happened what you're saying no, are sir, you I, telling me that I, somebody I, told you it happened as I began okay I've just heard of this mm -hmm. I don't know it as fact okay did you it, contact it, it, Public it, it, Works? It, Did you contact Public Works about this issue? This was my first awareness of this issue, and okay. he was up here I wish speaking the person, of this uh, issue. Well, I wish the and, person who And so, since he has knowledge of this issue, I'd okay, appreciate Mr. it Hotel, if he could answer it. Please, for all the benefit of all concern, this commission is dealing with the extension. If there are issues that has been brought to your attention that is relative to quality control, First of all, I want documentation that whoever knows these things have contacted Public Works, and then Public Works has to has to respond uh, transparently, and then that puts us in the loop. But if all you know, we could spend a lot of time if someone is just passing on information that they. they so you have no interest in knowing if there's quality control issues. That is your opinion. I did not say that. I simply say it for the record that if you had not contacted Public Works with the quality control issue that you're bringing to their attention and they have not given a proper explanation, then it goes to our administrator and it the, comes up to the us. The director just expressed knowledge of this issue. Is it not pertinent to allow him to, exp at, to provide that information to his limited knowledge, whatever that may be? Okay. You brought the information to the table. We will address the information. FLAG will not engage in a debate uh, with you. Uh, concerning that issue. Once the issue is brought to our attention, everyone have to understand it's not going to be fixed in this room. It's not going to be fixed in this room. And so, you know, it, it is what it is. Mr. Jakovovich, Mr. Bosco, Public Works, all concerned. The issue is raised. Deal with the issue like you know you should be dealing with it and bring that information back to our administrator so that we can be in the loop on it. And if it's any quality control deficiencies that are there, we expect your department to be aware of it and to handle it. Let me say that this issue that was brought, brought up was not a quality control, control issue. It was a non-standard way of doing the work. When the contractor put his work plan in, he was doing the milling and resurfacing of 209. So he milled it and put down a black base, uh, stand, uh, a roadway that you can drive on before he was able to pave the road. And mm -hmm. in the meantime, he did the culverts. Mm -hmm. And then when he came back, he, did, he had to do some adjustments on the non-standard base he put down. But what it was was a, a time issue that saved him time and saved us money. Okay, so in other words, he did it the way he felt he should do it in order to get the end results that we all want. Is that, that correct? That's correct. Didn't it wasn't, a, it wasn't a, an issue of the quality. Thank you for the clarification, Mr. Jakovovich. Any further discussion on this item? We will move now to item F. With the Sheriff's Department FDLE Edward Byrne Memorial Justice Assistant Grant Application. This is an annual uh, grant that is distributed throughout uh, the, uh, the county uh, with the proper municipalities. Uh, we do have the proper person, Ms. Kate Tucker from the uh, Putnam County Sheriff's Department. If you would just give us a synopsis of um, this and then we will proceed. Good morning, Commissioners. Kate Tucker, Putnam County Sheriff's Office Grants Coordinator. 
Um, this is to purchase equipment for the corrections response team, uh, riot, riot duty helmets, uh, pads, riot gear, ballistic vests, um, batons, and then the shipping for that. This is an annual grant that comes from um, DOJ, through DOJ to the FDLE. Um, it is actually a, a, a large grant that's split five ways between all five law enforcement agencies in the county. This is our share. <clears throat> the corrections response team are um, correction members who um, might do uh, high-risk transports. Uh, if we had an escape, they'd be activated. They, um, they do need material. The material they had and the equipment that they have is outdated, and, and so that's why we're applying for this. Okay, thank you, Ms. Tucker. We deal with this grant um, year in and year out, and so sometimes uh, just explanations uh, do help. Uh, Mr. Haven, I think you had some concerns uh, that you wanted to uh, raise on um, this particular uh, purchase. Okay, page 50, your packet shows five helmets and helmet pads and 17 batons for a total of 13,239. Yes, sir, that's what it shows. Okay, my question is, why are Crescent City, City of Palaka, Town of Wilaka, and Interlochen all being assessed another $13,235? They're not paying an assessment. That is the amount of the allocation of the grant that is distributed equi equitably among those municipalities are there. So each of them, according to the grant, the money comes to the county. The county has to sub it out and make sure that each of those entities get their part. They have their own plan, their own program, and they decide what they're going to use their funds for. We don't tell them how and what to purchase uh, for their respective uh, needs there. If you notice, uh, one of our municipalities is not listed. It's because they do not have a law enforcement department. But Crescent City has a department, Palatka, Wheelock, and Interlarkin, and that is their uh, our percentage or share of the grant and as a result of them getting their share they have to have they have to meet the criteria so they can spend those qualified funds okay so the the, the total grant per 66,179 and then you divide it up yes sir that okay. that is how it's divided correct all right okay it just you know it, I was concerned that the helmets and the batons are only going to be 13,000 what were they going to buy the other 59000 That's the county spending the county's chair. Okay. Okay, thank you so much, Mr. Mr. Haven. Mr. Chairman. Yes, ma'am. I just wanted to make a comment about um, I have seen Kay Tucker's name come across so many times on grants, and I think so often there are people behind the scenes that we don't get to see that do a great job. And if there's money to be had, um, the sheriff and through uh, – they are you're doing such a good job Thank you. and if it's out there we're getting it I look for it all the time you you do and that's very much appreciated and I just want to say that okay mr. Lyman while you're here and I'd like to incorporate your skills if you can find another spay neuter grant like you did the last one <laughs> they got no, us 25,000 that's uh, this is the third one that the county is yeah. getting and we did the first two because it was under the sheriff's department. So. Well, if you run across another one, Ms. Kay, please no, help we, us. <laughs> I, I'm going to forward that to the uh, person in charge of that. So. <laughs> yeah. All right. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Okay. Item H, I mean, uh, were there any questions on G on that? Um, has it mitigation grant? I don't think there anyone else. Okay. On H, the short list of qualified professional engineering consultants for continuing services contract. Is there a breakout of what these various entities uh, bring to the table? Uh, we not. see the short list, and we see uh, 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 at least about seven different entities uh, that are listed, but it does not tell us uh, precisely what each of those entities, uh, n the need that will be fulfilled uh, for their services. What is the scope of their services? Can you make sure that we get that and, and maybe elaborate it lightly? Well, they all, when we add them together, they have a, a multitude of, of services that they can provide for the county, from general, civil, to serving, to, to um, the geo, geo technical uh, issues and so forth, um, waste water, water, 
um, anything that we need. And if they don't have it on their staff, they have sub-consultants, they all do, down to archeologists and historians. So that anything that we need, uh, we can use. Okay, but you have them all listed here, all seven of them listed, and there must be something specific uh, uh, within your consulting need that each one brings differently. Otherwise, it wouldn't be seven different people on the list. Well, what, what it is is enough of a resource for us so that one of them is busy, we can go to the next one as the need arises. So that any time that a project comes up in the county, we have somebody to work on it. Okay. Any further questions on H? I'd like to see the full list next time if we could. Okay. We could, we could certainly provide that for you for all the different services that each provide. Yeah, don't wait till next time. Let's go ahead and, and send that to us. Yeah, I'd like to see it. Yes. Just stay there. I'm on the next issue. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Um, any other issues on uh, item H? <clears throat> okay. Uh, let's go over to item I, Public Works. Uh, the Area 1 and Area 2 uh, road resurfacing projects. Uh, Mr. Pellicier, sir. Yes, uh, Mr. Kovitz, could you give me some clarification on Federal Point Road from 361 Federal Point Road to 351? Is that that right? is the area where you had the the problems where the road was going up and down? That's the okay. correction there. And he's gonna come in there and mill that down and then yes. relay it and put fill or whatever it takes to take all that That's out. That's correct. It. Thank you so much, Mr. Chairman. Yes, sir. I have Mr. a couple of questions on that, um, Mr. Kovitz. I don't know if you're able to. But Page 66 of your documents here and page 72. Um, my question concerns Article 6, subcontracting. The prime contractor must perform 30% of the work. Um, we kind of, kind of dropped the ball on that with West Hillsboro, and we don't want to see that again. Um, is that standard, or can we increase that a little bit? So we use the primary contractor instead of subcontractors? That's been our standard, but we certainly can revisit that again to see if, if 30% is, is too small of a number. Well, it seems like we're not, we're not, well, not able to hold the sub responsible for the prime's work, and I, I wanna see if the prime gets the work that he does the work, um, and I, I think that's acceptable, so. And can we go to page 72, please, in our packet there? And I have just one more question. Up here on the top, it says bid bond if required, payment bond if required, performance bond if required. Charlie, you know where I'm going. Engineer drawings if required. Are they all required on this job? Uh, on this job, they are. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Jacobi. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you so much. Any other, any other discussion on item I? Okay, uh, item K, the uh, Trident Consulting Group, LLC, uh, completion of the critical infrastructure assessments. Uh, were the, were the, was there any additional information, uh, Mr. Romay, that you could uh, just give us some insight on? Mr. Bly had, uh, had a concern. I think you will probably answer it. <coughs> Thank you, Mr. Chairman. This is a Homeland Security grant, uh, planning grant that we're gonna be utilizing uh, to do some critical infrastructure reviews and security reviews for a number of facilities, both uh, uh, large uh, businesses and governmental entities. Uh, we've done these in the past. This is another grant that we've received to do these again. Basically, these grant or this grant will provide a contractor to be able to go through and do the in-depth uh, review to the Homeland Security standard. Uh, that's a federal standard that takes several days per facility to do and uh, that will also provide us the ability in the future to go after grant funds to help strengthen the facilities and uh, make some needed improvements. Okay, thank you so much, Chief. Mr. Bly, if you'll come forward and state um, for the record what specific uh, concerns or observations you have on this particular item. Robert Bly, um, specifics is what I was actually after. Um, what I thought I heard there was kind of generalities. If I, if I could hear 
maybe specifics of what they're looking for to improve? The Department of Homeland Security has a extensive uh, multi-page task. It, it actually does a field survey, which probably takes about 16 hours to do per facility, and then a multi-day uh, review. And what we end up with is a not only a complete review of the facility for security, we've done these for schools, for active shooters, things of that nature, providing uh, additional opportunities for uh, where fences should go, what type of uh, security measures may be taken to help lessen the, uh, the vulnerability in these type facilities. So These people come in as experts to uh, identify uh, those areas as a part of their assessment and analysis, correct? That is correct. These are specific uh, individuals that are trained and uh, vetted by not only the state but also Homeland Security. Correct. So it's, it's, it's more about their assessment rather than us having the specifics of it. Once they do the assessment, then we will have the specifics. Correct. And then it's a matter of the funding uh, that is required to be in compliance with what the assessment brings. And we get additional points for grants to go once these uh, yeah, once it's done, done, so it's not a random, you know, the one of the county officials decide that you think that a certain thing need. When these experts come in and say that there is a need here for some critical infrastructure, then it makes sense uh, to all concern because it's not subject to uh, it being in my district or someone else's district or I was interested in it and two or three of us wanted it. It's coming from this team of professionals. Does that clear it up? Okay, thank you, Mr. Bly. Yes, sir, Commissioner Harvey. Chief Rame, it's also a set of eyes of, of what they've seen throughout the, the country, correct, in other areas, and how, they, how we can protect. Okay. I, I just wanted to make that clear because we don't have privy to all the information out there th throughout the whole United States of America, and it's good to see that this comes to pass through a different set of eyes, basically. And like I, I mentioned before, to further answer your question, we've utilized this, this process in the past and uh, to make those security improvements and additional fencing and things of that nature. Thank you. Thank you so much, Chief. Can I? Yes, ma'am. Okay, before you leave, um, I had a, a gentleman approach me not long ago who is kind of a new citizen to the area, and apparently he's done a lot of volunteer work in the different emergency uh, facilities, and he said that our preparations for the last proposed hurricane that may have hit was superb that he was so impressed that <coughs> little Putnam County had everything just lined up straight and uh, he just wanted to compliment uh, us and I'm passing that on to you and your staff because uh, that's nice to hear. Well thank you and it's not just us it's a team effort uh, from all the county departments municipalities and and our private uh, entities that help us out during during these events and it really came to fruition in 04 when we had the three storms back to back and everybody including uh, Georgia Pacific, Seminole and all and many of our businesses helping out, out clear roads and things like that. It, it really is neat and we know that we've got a great process but it's nice to hear from someone on the outside Absolutely. who has had some experience to come see what we've got and I uh, just wanted to pass that on. Thank you, Thank you for your leadership Chief. The next item is the uh, renewal of the health care contract with Stuart Marchman. Uh, coming from our legal department, you reviewed the um, uh, services um, that we get. Is there any explanation uh, or just an overview of that uh, renewal? I don't see anybody representing that, Mr. Chair. Uh, they asked if they needed to be here, Mr. Chairman, and I told them, no, this is an annual contract. We're renewing on the same terms and conditions that we had last year and these are substance abuse treatment services that they provide to the drug court. Thank you very kindly. Any further discussion on any uh, consent items? Mr. Hotelling, uh, you had a concern on item C. Is that related to the committee makeup or is it related to something about the program itself? Okay. Thank you very much. I'm going to entertain a motion to uh, Mr. move the consent agenda. Mr. Chairman, I'd like to make a motion we move the consent agenda forward. I have a proper motion. Second. Second. Further discussion? All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed, like sign. Hearing none, motion carries. This commission will be on a five-minute recess.
and and be back in session. Did I see you sent me, Mr. Sloan? Was not good today. Nah, it's a little better. Miss yeah, Blythe Bird, the efficient leader of the United Way of Putnam County, uh, sharing the vision. Help us see a new perspective. Good morning and welcome. Good morning. Good morning. First, thank you so much for uh, having me join you this morning. I'm really excited. Uh, as the new executive director of United Way of Putnam County, just uh, uh, a little over six months here, I'm excited to be talking with you about United Way, uh, what we envision, and how you can help. Uh, so I believe I have a little PowerPoint here that should pop up. We have it on our screens. Perfect. I'm not sure. <coughs> All right. Take to get it on those screens. Yeah, I'm Got hoping it. so. Oh, perfect. Thanks, we're there. Wonderful. <laughs> And John gave me a great little clicker here. So we're going to see if I can work through this. Um, so again, United Way, uh, Blythe Bird is my name. And it's all about uh, changing the narrative here in Palaka. As I've listened to some of the people come up, uh, the ones that uh, come up and talk about solutions. Uh, that's really what I want to pass on to our children, being an elementary school teacher here in Putnam County for many years. Uh, that was one of the things that I would always bring up to my students, see problems as opportunities and be a part of the solution. Being part of the solution is pretty simple. It's all about what you can do uh, or what you can think of to do to make changes uh, in your community. No matter how small that change might be, it's going to be important to someone. But let's start off with saying what we do as United Way. The simplest answer is that we help people. That's what we do from all walks of life. Families, babies, teenagers, older adults, new parents, people with health problems, people with special needs, people who just want to make their lives better, and what I see the most of, hardworking people who are just struggling. Last year alone, we partnered with 13 agencies here in Putnam County, 10 of those receiving grants from us. Uh, in fact, with all of those agencies, we helped over 36,000 people. This is an important number because that's two out of every four people. So you might be asking, how do we help people? I'm the only employee of United Way. How could I possibly help 36,000 people? We have a wonderful board, and they make decisions on agencies and programs with the help of volunteers in the community that actually go and visit and fed out these particular agencies. But more importantly, we give them hope. And we're able to do this because of people just like you. We are lucky recipients of donations that come in one or uh, time during the year as a one-time donation or through payroll deduction. The wonderful thing about this is that the money that we raise here in Putnam County stays here. That's 100% of that money stays here helping our people. Not many of the nationally known uh, charities out there can actually say this. That's one of the things I love about working for United Way. The other great thing about working with United Way is I get to see what your heart's desires are. When you send in your money, you can actually state what your heart's uh, desire is and where you want that money to go and how you want it to be effective. So here's how it works. You give us your donation, and these agencies that our volunteers and our board have vetted out, then receive that money to implement programs, impactful community programs, that we can then see the outcomes of, 
measure those and make sure that we're continuing on in that path year after year. And that's important because these agencies actually have to apply each year and we make sure that not only are they impactful to our community, but that they're also fiscally responsible. Impactful to our community means that they are looking at the building blocks of a good quality life. That's income, education, and health. Just in case you were wondering, some of those uh, programs that we actually support, school readiness programs, mentoring programs, reading programs, financial education classes, all of these are given either through our agencies or United Way themselves. Our agency also helps in the area of income. We're just helping those individuals and families who need a little bit of extra help, education, or in a moment of crisis, that helping hand that makes the difference between having them in their home or them being out on the street. Last but not least, I was glad to see Maria Garcia up here. Our agencies help to improve the health of our citizens. One of the programs that I'm very proud of is the Family Wise program, which is a simple prescription card that you take to your pharmacist to get discounts on your prescriptions. There's no sign up, so people don't have to have a computer inside their home, uh, and uh, there's no fee associated with it whatsoever. So basically, instead of focusing on just one single issue, we focus on lots of them kind of all at the same time. That's why we reach out to our agencies and we fund those agencies to help us in all of these different areas. So if you've ever wondered what some of the things that your money does when you give to United Way, I have some wonderful numbers here. These are from last year. 11,891 households got emergency food. 1,241 preschoolers prepared for success in kindergarten. 320 women and children received shelter, and they were safe from domestic violence. 234 adults received 1,818 warm, nutritious meals. We are our brother's keeper. So I'm coming to you because we'd like to increase these numbers and add to the programs that we already do. So what I'm talking about is just a minute of your time. If a person making $10 an hour could give one minute of their time a day, five days a week, over the course of a year, their gift would be $44.20. It doesn't seem like a whole lot. However, you could help a preschooler prepare for kindergarten give safe shelter to those women and children we were discussing, heat a senior's home in the winter, or help a family achieve financial stability, or one of the programs I hope to bring to Putnam County, mentor a young adult. Just one minute of your time will make a life-changing difference to someone in our community. One of the programs that we've just started is the book bag drive. This was amazing to see. The people at the hospital volunteered to stuff 350 book bags, and we were able to get kids ready for school on the first day. It took us about 10 volunteers, $4,800, but it was worth all the happy, smiling faces. So to help us out, I would ask for you today to please go to our website, UWPCFL, it stands for United Way, Putnam County, Florida, .org. You can learn there not only how to give uh, monetarily, but also uh, your unused materials or household items. These, all these things help our agencies. If you can't do that, please advocate. Talk to people about the help that's out there to people. You never know who might need that. And what I'd love to push for? Volunteering. <laughs> I need your help. I am just one person trying to help all of Putnam County. My board does everything they can possibly do. They volunteer a lot of their time as well. But we need you. We need your help. 
And that brings me back to changing that narrative. Instead of seeing problems, seeing solutions, seeing opportunities for improvement. I want us to live united, to join our hands, to open our hearts, to lend our muscle, and of course, that helps everyone to find their voice. You can give 110% so you can see the change that you want to see and think we before me. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you. We know the presence of the United Way in our community over these years uh, have had uh, such a footprint <clears throat> Um, on our community and we don't really want to even imagine what the community would be like without the presence. Uh, the agency not only bring partners together for those in need, but the partners together who are the donors, who are the contributors and, and, and the businesses as well as uh, individual citizens. Um, and you live up to the name. And so thank you for being such a capable director with such passion um, uh, for our community because that does make a difference. Commissioners, are there any uh, comments or input? Just a big welcome, if I could, Mr. Chairman. Glad to have you in our community and look forward to working with you. Thank you so much. And as you stated, uh, Mr. Flagg, it is all about passion. Yes. And I'm very passionate for Putnam County. And I know that there's a lot of opportunities out there. Oh, no question about it. But there, if we put our heads together, we can find the solutions. That is correct. So thank you again so much and each opportunity that we get. Uh, we do share you know, with others uh, the importance of you being here. We understand, first of all, why there is a need in the first place, but then at the same time, we want to maximize uh, the services and the efficiencies and bringing that many agencies together uh, under one umbrella certainly makes uh, for more efficiency. So thank you. Yes, thank you. All right. At this time, we will recess the Board of County Commissioners and convene uh, the Port Authority. Uh, Port Authority members, you should have the minutes from the previous meeting on August the 11th, 2015. Move approval, Mr. Chair. Proper Second. motion and three seconds. <laughs> <laughs> Sound like a chorus. There you go. Uh, there's all in sync. Uh, uh, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? <coughs> motion carries. Uh, item B is a review of the lease agreement, and uh, we'll turn over to our uh, legal and administrative staff for that. Yep. <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, first, I apologize to you for failing to provide a copy of the uh, lease agreement to uh, Ms. Lassiter for inclusion in the agenda, uh, but it is just a copy. Uh, it is a, our standard little lease agreement that we have for the Port Authority uh, for the lease of the warehouse at the, at the barge port. Uh, this is for a prospective tenant at the barge port. Uh, an individual who is currently renting that a portion of that uh, warehouse closest to the uh, to the river at the barge port currently uh, the reason it is prospective lease at the moment is we thought it would be a final lease but the uh, but the individual is currently negotiating a contract with a, with a company to uh, manufacture barges uh, they had not finalized that that particular negotiation at this point, although they had anticipated having done so, um, and they're not ready to execute that lease. If they do finalize that negotiation, they will be ready to execute the lease. Uh, if they finalize that negotiation, then then uh, what this uh, individual intends to do is to relocate his company from Green Coast Springs, which would then bring a new company into the barge port and bring new jobs with that, totaling about 14. Uh, they would then pay us uh, about $4,000 a month in rent plus uh, docking fees uh, at the barge port for the first year. And then in the second year, there would be an escalator included in that. And, and as I said, the, the terms and conditions of the lease are pretty much our standard terms and conditions as associated with, the, uh, with, that, with that warehouse. Uh, so that's what we really wanted to present to you today uh, was that was this lease uh, and uh, we had wanted to ask you to execute that lease today in, in, in anticipation that 
the company would have completed its negotiations with the with the company that it was dealing with for the finalization of that contract but that not having been completed what we we're asking is that you would give tentative approval to the to the lease and authorize its execution if and when that company is comes in the door and says we've ne we've negotiated we've completed our negotiations with the company and and we want now to execute that lease because that's liable to happen at, on a given on any, any given day and they might be ready to go move forward mr lionel um, Mr. Leary, is the length of the lease? I know it's tentative. Well, it's the initial term of the lease is two years. Uh, we hope that uh, if they're successful in negotiating a contract, that that might be a you know continuing, ongoing thing, and then this this would be a this would be a lease for that facility that would extend beyond that two-year period. But the initial term is two years. And they they if they didn't take the whole warehouse, do they want the whole? No, they want the whole warehouse. Yes. Very good. They are currently leasing just a portion of the warehouse on a short-term, month-to-month basis. But uh, the execution of this lease would be for the entire 20,000 square feet. So the $4,000 a month and the dockage covers the warehouse and the water, the bulkhead area. Yes, their true? right to use the bulkhead is not an exclusive right. It's, it's they just cover, a right. I know we just got the crane last right. month. Right. Will we... Uh, that will be additional. In other words, they could if they use the crane, it'll be an additional cost. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. So that's an additional revenue we possibly could see there. Yes, sir. That's all I have, Mr. Chair. Thank you so Thank much, Commissioner Harris. That's good news. Yeah. Really good. Yeah, we're optimistic that they'll be able to finalize their negotiations and be another company in the barge port. But that's why we have the barge port to it bring is. jobs to the community and. Maybe 14 doesn't sound like that much, but it's the beginning, and we want to utilize that. So I would, um, if you're ready for a motion. I want to make sure I'm ready. <laughs> you're ready. We're ready. All right. Harris. I make a motion that we um, pre-approve negotiations of the lease with the terms you discussed with the um, oversight of the lease between you and uh, Mr. Castleberry. Uh, as long as you agree with the terms and you're the experts with the lease language, that we pre-authorize it so that we can get ready to go and it well, comes about. We're pre-authorizing a tentative agreement. Is that correct? Yeah, well, both both parties have have reviewed the lease as has been prepared by Mr. Cassowary and have have agreed to its terms and conditions. He's we're ju he's just not ready to execute because he hasn't finalized his negotiations with the company that he's dealing with in the moment so uh, as soon as that's complete then he'll be ready to execute he's agreed to all the terms and conditions commissioners have a motion on the floor second 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 I think, I think we should, excuse me i think we should clarify that it's it's authorizing the execution of the lease on those terms not just the negotiations right. okay i'll make my motion uh, authorizing still got a second all right okay clarification has been made thank you council further discussion motion and a second on the floor all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none. Motion carries. Any other Port Authority of business? Any other Port Authority of business? Hearing none, we are adjourned as the Port Authority reconvene the board. Item 11, Planning and Development Services. 10 o'clock, 10.53. Michael Brown, Planning Manager, uh, Public Hearing. Uh, this is a plan unit development case number 15-005 zoning map amendment from uh, plan unit development to plan unit development with revised conceptual site plan and development agreement. Donnie and Lisa King are here and are represented. We will have an overview of the case uh, as presented uh, with the recommendation that comes uh, from the planning board. Good morning, sir. Good morning. He's trying to engage. We can, um, Mike Brown, Planning Development Services, it's case PUD 15005. The applicant is Donnie and Lisa King. Um, this is zoning map amendment to change a project of PUD, Planning and Development to Planning and Development. The subject property is approximately 9.86 acres located in the Fruitland area of Putnam County. It was historically established as a fish camp but that first opened in 1969. Uh, property was 
then subject to a couple of rezonings in 1999 and 2005. In 2013, PUD 13002 was approved by the county, um, which allowed for roads, uh, 33 slip marina, 33 recreational vehicles, five rental cabins, um, conversion of existing residents to an office and clubhouse, and a restaurant and tiki bar. The uh, amendment to that PUD is what's before you today, um, and it would add to the development um, a playground, a expansion of the restaurant by 6, 000, or 600 square feet, a thousand square foot deck associated with the restaurant, a boardwalk from deck to the parking lot and the tiki bar, a 240 square foot stage area and 916 square foot pool and deck. Um, one of the issues that has raised um, during both the planning commission hearing and prior to that, and I know that many of you have heard, received comments regarding this, is um, the sound um, emitting from the project site. Um, as part of the amended uh, development agreement, the Planning Commission and staff is recommending the limitation of amplified sound from the project to the following hours, Sunday through Thursday, 11 a.m. to 9 p.m., Friday through Saturday, 11 a.m. to 11 p.m. Um, that, along with a new site plan and some changes in the phasing, is what um, would be the changes to the development agreement. Uh, staff finds that the revision of the, of the PUD, the changing of the zoning from PUD to PUD, along with the revision to the development agreement and conceptual site plan are consistent with the PUZ, PUD zoning requirements in the land development code, is consistent with the future land use designation, which is um, rural center, and um, is consistent with the goals, objectives, and policies of the Putnam County Comprehensive Plan. At its August 12th meeting, uh, the Planning Commission reviewed the application and recommended approval of, of the rezoning. Um, staff supports that recommendation uh, with, again, with the changes to limiting the um, time of amplified sound to the uh, Sunday through Thursday 11 to 9 and Friday and Saturday 11 to 11. Any questions of staff at this time? Yes. Mr. Mr. Chair. Warren. Okay. Um, when I was reading the documentation uh, written off to the side, it says live entertainment with amplified sound only at the stage. What happened with that? Is that part of your recommendation? No, that was that, that was um, taken out at, taken out at, at the planning commission. So it's just amplified sound anywhere on the site within the project. Um, did they, do you intend to have different sites where you're going to have live amplified sound? Is that? I, I do not, I don't want to speak for the applicant, the applicants right. here and the, and the attorney. I do not believe it's their intent <coughs> to have amplified sound anywhere else than the, than the stage area, but they're best to answer that. Okay. I, I guess what? I know that you've been working hard to bring down the sound and, you know, uh, be a better neighbor with the sound and that you had the curtains put up on the stage itself to limit it. So if you move it to another site uh, on the grounds, what will you do to help with the sound? So I'd let you address it. Please come. Please come. We need it on the mic so we can get the minutes. Thanks. We just not, did not want to be limited. Like if we had a, a function going on at the restaurant or at the clubhouse, someone had a birthday party or something like that. But no, we'll never, you know, the intentions are always to have that place basically for our music. But should somebody have a birthday party at the pool and clubhouse, we didn't want them to not be able to have, you know, a small birthday party there 
or music on the deck at the restaurant, you know, one afternoon for a party or something like that. Okay. So you don't really know exactly what all you'd use it for, but you just wanted to keep that open. Yes, ma'am. I didn't think I wanted to restrict <laughs> myself to that. Okay. Yeah. Thank you, District One. Uh, we will have some additional questions. Uh, the owners are represented by Mr. Charlie Douglas. Do you have any opening commentary? I do. Uh, Charlie Douglas, 601 St. John's Avenue. We hear a lot about what is wrong with Putnam County, and today we're here to talk about what is right. And Renegades on the River is right for Putnam County. It is a great establishment. I hope all of you have had the opportunity to go down there and take a look around. When you drive in, it is beautifully laid out brick pavers everywhere, RV sites, cottages, a restaurant being built, the pool's gonna go off to the right-hand side, there's a tiki hut there, you have cottages on the left-hand side, a marina store, a marina for people to come up uh, on the river, and there are not a lot of places uh, like this anywhere, and we're so fortunate to have a place like this here in Putnam County. Uh, and it brings a huge benefit to the community. Uh, in the first way, it's, it's a tax revenue generator for the county. Uh, there are a lot of uh, functions that the, the county um, has to provide, and this is a way uh, through uh, tax dollars to, to help the county and be good stewards of the community um, that uh, the Kings are uh, so happy to live in. So in addition to um, helping the government with uh, tax revenue, it, it also benefits the image of our county. People come to renegades from all over, not just here in Putnam County, from all over the state and all over the country. People bring their RVs, their Prevost motorhomes, uh, down to South Putnam uh, to be able to experience the river and what it is for uh, the nature and the wildlife and the uh, fishing and the boating. And when those folks come in from out of town, they see what Putnam County has to offer. That's what we want in Putnam County, is just a chance to be seen by somebody outside who can recognize the value that is our county. And a place like Renegades provides that that introduction to who we are as a community. And when those people come in from out of town and from out of state, they'll say, wow, there's so much here in Putnam County. Uh, we, we wanna be here too. Let's set up another business. And the, the ripple effect will just continue. In addition, Renegades provides jobs. Right now, it's about approximately 16 people that Renegades employs. And some of them are here today. If you're associated with Renegades, would you uh, raise your hand, please? So, and th this is um, just a, a small group of, of the entire uh, group that is down at Renegades um, who are um, receiving income and contributing back to the community here in Putnam County. And we, we need more jobs. We need more Renegades. We need uh, more businesses. We need to uh, foster the economic development like Renegades is doing here. In addition, with your approval of the PUD and the uh, restaurant that will be forthcoming, there will be another 16 to 20 additional jobs uh, that will be present down in South Putnam. So this is a win-win for the county. Uh, so because Renegades has um, supported the community, uh, we're here asking uh, for uh, Putnam County to support Renegades. And before you is a PUD amendment request that will allow Renegades to continue their vision and their dream and to allow for additional jobs and, and make Renegades the uh, premier um, destination spot for South Putnam and for Putnam County as a whole. Uh, in order to do that, um, we uh, urge you and, and request of you to approve the PUD amendment and follow uh, the recommendation of the Planning Commission, uh, which voted unanimously um, to approve this PUD amendment. And the staff recommends it. Um, the, the Kings, uh, Mr. and Mrs. King are um, good neighbors. Uh, they have been through the um, negotiation process with um, the, the staff. Uh, they, they have made concessions. They have done, they have hired experts to help come in and, and make recommendations. And they are doing everything that they can to be um, the best community member possible in, in striking that good balance between business and the interests of neighbors. So again, we urge your support and we thank you for uh, your recognition of the fact that uh, business is good, we need more of it, economic development um, can uh, flourish with the support of folks and projects like Renegades on the River.
Thank you uh, so much, Mr. Douglas, for your presentation. Uh, um, we're going to call you back in just a few moments. Don't leave. Uh, Mr. King, did he represent exactly what you would have said? Yes, do you agree with what he said? I know you paid him to say it, but do you agree with <laughs> it? Yes, sir, I agree with All what right, he said. I just want to make sure uh, that the owners are and the attorneys were singing from the same hymnal. Yes, sir, yeah. All right, sir. Yep, I we'll, call, we'll call you back. If you got any more questions, Nancy, about, you know, if we had a little birthday party or something, somebody was playing a guitar or something like that, that's why we had them strike that out of the, the last deal when we was here. Yeah, we, we, you stay close to it. We're going to call you back in just a moment. I'm sure you will. All right. Any, uh, this is a public hearing. We open the public hearing for the benefit of those who are in favor of this project as well as those who have some adverse feelings about it. We want to call those that are in favor of the project. If there's something you need to add that has not been stated uh, in this public hearing, uh, please come forward, state your name and address for the record, and uh, we will hear from you. And if you disagree with what's been said, then you can say, I agree with what's been said, and then the record will reflect that. Thank you. My name is Frances Lindbergh, and I have the pleasure, <clears throat> excuse me, to be employed at Renegades. We do have 16 plus employees, but added to that 16 employees, we have dealt with local contractors and subcontractors. We've kept pretty much everything local to put local money into Putnam County. With the new employees, but just as it stands right now, most of us that work at Renegades, we work a lot of hours. We put our money back in Putnam County. We shop locally. We do what we do here in Putnam County. And all those families that that supports, that's 25 just on employees, $25,000 a week, not a month, but a week that we spend locally. They're very good to us as we are to everybody that crosses our path. And if you could hear some of the comments from the people that have, we're booked all the way to New Year's and next year's events, Labor Day, July, we go on through the year. And these people enjoy it here. That says something for Putnam County. Thank you so very much for your commentary. Any others to speak uh, in favor of this project? Please come forward, sir. Robert Bly. Um, I had the opportunity to go out to Renegades uh, last week, and and uh, it was my first time being out there. I knew that there had been some problems with sound out there, and uh, so I wanted to find out for myself how bad that would be. Now, I have sang karaoke badly many times. So you do what, sir? Badly. Karaoke, uh -huh. where you look at the monitor. Okay. He can't sing. <laughs> Okay. I realize you did that again to make sure no, that everybody sure knew that, that I was saying that. karaoke badly. That's, that's great. Uh, but my point is, uh, if, if I were a neighbor and someone was murdering a song that I really like to listen to, I could, I could imagine how irritating that could be. Um, but as far as the ordinance uh, goes, I'm not sure that we, we uh, narrowed down a way to... Um, uh, uh, measure the the sound uh, so I just want to make sure that we have a set uh, way of uh, monitoring and you're, that. you're talking about the noise ordinance right now right is that what you're addressing yes okay we're gonna have a discussion on the noise ordinance at a different time uh, right now I want to stick with this uh, particular agreement this development agreement that we have before us um, so that we can um, That's right. deal with the revised. I, I'm not going to talk about that anymore. But okay. what I want to say is the neighbors around Renegades, just like everyone around the um, uh, racetrack or any other place that makes noise at night, need to understand what Renegades brings to their community. And we, we all need to be able to work together and be lenient with each other. And that's my point is that you know, it's a tough decision for you sometimes to have to say, you know, I, I'm getting complaints, but this is a good thing for Putnam County. 
this is a good thing for Putnam County. This is exactly what we need to bring in, and we need to support them. Okay. Thank you so much, Mr. Bly. Please come forward, sir. Good morning. Good morning. My name is Josh Tankersley. Um, I've been working with the Kings for going on three years now. Um, I'm closer to the microphone. Okay. Sorry. Um, I've been working with the Kings for going on three years now. Uh, we've, I represent Cisco and just the development side, the equipment side, the food side, the specialty side, the information that's going into that. I've seen a lot. Um, I've owned my own restaurants. I've had experience in other restaurants. I sell in St. John's County. I sell in Putnam County. I lived in Duval County. What they're creating is a destination. Um, I wouldn't necessarily narrow it down to just call it a restaurant with some camping sites. You can't find anything like they're building outside of Amelia Island or something extravagant like that. They're not bringing in, you know, people with pop-up tents and campers. They're bringing in people that have money in their Prevost and their two hundred and three hundred thousand dollar motorhomes that are coming in and, like was said before, spending that money in your county. I guarantee you, and I would even challenge you, to drive around to the other facilities outside of Renegades on the River and find something comparable. There's people in St. John's County that are talking about Renegades on the River. There's people in Duval County that are talking about Renegades on the River. They're creating a destination that's just really going to draw people in from surrounding counties and even surrounding states. Um, I just wanted to put my two cents in that they're not cutting any corners. They're not skipping anything. Um, they're literally building the best of the best, and they're doing it right here in South Putnam County. Thank you so much for your commentary. Any other citizens that want to speak for um, this amendment, a revision to the plan? Good morning. My name is Pat Magnuson, TG, and I live on 1162 County Road 309, which is probably, oh, maybe 30 feet from Renegade's driveway, our driveway. <laughs> so we're right across the street. And I've heard a lot of flack about all the noise. I have never heard the noise in my house, mm. ever. If we take the dog out for a walk in the yard, you might hear some on a Saturday evening. But it's not noise, it's just good music. I'm not an employee of Renegades either. I just go over there for fun. <laughs> <laughs> and it is fun. <laughs> I just wanted to go on record that the noise factor is, is, isn't a factor as far as we are concerned. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Any additional citizens wanting to speak for? We'll close out the fourth side. Are there any opposition, any citizens wanting to speak in opposition uh, to any parts of this uh, revised site plan and development agreement? Close the public hearing at this time. Commissioners, we will now ask whether there has been any ex parte communication, starting with District 1. I. Um have had um, ex parte communications. I've visited the site, um, and it is very nice. And um, I've had conversation with neighbors in the area and with the owners, and I'm just trying to look at the whole project. Sound like District 1 has provided due diligence. That's right. <laughs> wonderful, wonderful. District 2? Um, also, I've had conversation with the Kings and Quite a few of their neighbors, uh, Bertie Allender, Adam Delaney and his wife, and uh, even you, Miss Pat, I talked to. And um, I think that's it. <laughs> and they're just trying to get a feel for what the um, neighbors thought. And it was all very positive, extremely positive. Very good. District 4? Uh, yes, sir. I have had the Planning Commission chairman call me, but um, I told him I could not speak to him about this issue. District 5. Uh, I have a, uh, also attended Renegades, and it almost came up in conversation with their council the other day when he and I were traveling, but we avoided that just as soon as we realized that he was council for them. 
thank you very kindly. Uh, likewise, uh, the individuals that are listed, no outsiders, but individuals that are listed in the planning board uh, documentation uh, here has certainly expressed themselves and their concerns, uh, mainly, again, uh, concerning um, whether or not the sound analysts and the acoustic engineers are, are doing what they need to do um, to ensure uh, that this business, number one, is successful. Uh, I've heard nothing but great compliments about the Kings uh, as it relates to them being entrepreneurs in our community. Uh, very proud of, of getting that kind of a report. And I think it's just the balance of what I would call revenue and reverberation uh, there. You know, as, as long as there's balance, uh, there are hours that you are agreeing um, uh, with here. And if the party is just too live and the time come out, it's got to be like Cinderella at midnight, you know. You know what, Cinderella had to go home uh, there. So we're asking, you know, again, for all concern, be tolerable. Uh, we know that there won't be any all-night parties because the agreement doesn't state that, and it's, it's, it's just important that uh, the, the, the levels are tolerable, uh, even during the hours that we can do it. We don't just unwind and, and, and let it happen. Uh, and I believe, based on what I'm hearing from the Kings, from their council uh, today, that we have upstanding citizens that are bringing uh, a new level uh, to our community that we can all be proud of uh, for some, some, some positive entertainment. Uh, are there any uh, further discussions? Uh, yes. District 1. Thank you. Um, may I address the Planning Commission? Yes. I mean, Planning Department. Um, we are working on our noise ordinance. Yes. And so it's still a project in the process. Right. Yes. And I was wondering if we approve this today, will they fall under the rules of the old ordinance or, or the new one? They will, they will fall into the rules, and there maybe the attorney will correct me if I'm wrong, um, with whatever ordinance is in place at the time. So if the new ordinance is adopted, they will have to comply with any standards in there, except for the time, any time frame that there may be in the ordinance related to amplified sound. So they would the fall PUD under the new set, ordinance? Yeah, yeah. Correct, okay. But the PUD will set when amplified sound can happen. Okay. So I don't know, you know because I don't know what, whether that will be an issue with the new ordinance or not. And I'd like to ask a question, if I may, of the Kings. Mm -hmm. Will you okay. come forward, Mr. <laughs> Mr. and Mrs. King? Y'all figure out which one have the answer. I think they figured it out. <laughs> no. I think we know. <laughs> um, I know that you have been looking at ways to reduce the sound, and I think the biggest complaint I've heard is like the bass, you know, for, for the neighbors, and that's bothering them. But, and I know that you put up the sound, you know, screen on the stage. Have you done, have you hired a professional or gotten advice from someone? Yes, ma'am. We hired an acoustical engineer. Um, he's been out to the site, um, and we got one of those uh, sound meters, you know, for your sound the decibel for the decibels, and, and we use that over the weekend. And um, actually, I had one neighbor come down, and I said, wanted to see if we was open or not because he couldn't hear nothing or see no lights or nothing. I said, yeah, we've been open, Cliff. <laughs> Good. Yep. Okay, so you're um, going by the advice of the professional. Yes. And, and you went to that. Uh, that's what I was hoping you would yes, do. Of course, you know, we haven't built all this to be an annoyance to our to the area that we're in. You know, we're taking every step to make sure that we provide a comfortable environment for our neighbors as well as the people that we have staying there in our park. You know, we do have cabins. Everybody who comes and stays there does not come does not come to the tiki bar. You know, I mean, they don't. They may come down during the week or something but everybody that's there doesn't you know doesn't want to be there during the hours and as far as the hours that is way good for us because we're ready to get out of there at 11. <laughs> so. I understand thank you I wanted to know if you took further steps and um, did he say anything about plantings of um, trees or vegetation? We're still waiting to get his report back actually he came he came what week before last we yeah, haven't week got his before entire... last he came out there he, he, he was on the property for four hours 
and um, you know listen to the music and he set up different stuff around the property and and he gave me some other advice that I could do on, you know like on this on the band stage right there that would help and um, that's what we're gonna find out if we get approved then we're gonna do some of that stuff okay that's good thank you very much just before you leave if you all are away from your properties doing a weekend where you've got live entertainment going on, do you have you empowered uh, someone that have the authority that you have if something is brought to the attention of management that is borderline uh, out of compliance? Is there someone that have the authority to, to take charge? Oh, of yeah. That? Yeah, yes. our daughter's right on the property. Okay. Um, and they're she, all, they're she on the property on the weekends. They stay right there on the weekends, my daughter and son-in-law. Okay. Thank you so much. Actually, she manages the whole place. This we just kind of give her a hand. <laughs> all right. Okay. She, all right. Any other comments or questions from the commission? Uh, Mr. Chairman, that was kind of long. Not for the kings, though, if you don't mind. I'll move on to Mr. Brown. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Continue, sir. Uh, Mr. Chairman, thank you. Uh, Mr. Brown, that was one of my questions, was piggybacking on Commissioner Harris. Are we setting these uh, people up for failure when the new ordinance comes out? And I don't want to, to see us do that. I, I don't think we are, but I don't know what the new ordinance is going to say. So I, I can't. Well, I mean, they're build, building their business model around this right now. And if we do something that would impose upon that, that might impede them a little bit and there is there is that potential but i again i don't know what the new ordinance may or may not say um, okay. as from a staff standpoint we believe that we had a we tried to develop a balance by setting hours for amplified sound because that seemed to be the issue all right thank you mr brown thank like you mr. district two Mr. Chairman, yes. and for a council also to bring up the point, we, as far as I understand, don't have a sound ordinance right now. Is that correct? We do have one, but there are some problems with it. Yeah. Okay. It's unconstitutional, been found? No. In, no. In no. All right. So these hours that are in this PUD uh, modification. Uh, supersede anything in the ordinance. Okay. That's what I wanted to know. Right there. Any additional discussion on the revelation of the uh, whatever the sound ordinance that is uh, in progress or uh, process uh, that this supersedes it? The amplified sound, the covered stage, um, and the areas outside of the establishment uh, will be permitted with amplified sound Sunday through Thursday from 11 a.m. until 9 p.m. Friday and Saturday, 11 a.m. to 11 p.m. Uh, this PUD supersedes any proposed noise ordinance revision. Is that what you're saying, Council? No, I'm saying that the hours that they've agreed to in this agreement would control this particular op operation no matter what we put in the ordinance. Uh, the ordinance, they will still have to comply with what the ordinance says regarding sound levels Okay. which, as I understand, we're going to move from a decibel-type uh, reading to a plainly audible re, uh, standard. So that whatever the ordinance ends up saying, they're going to have to comply with that. Um, they won't need an exception for their hours because their hours are covered under the PUD. Correct. Okay, even if the hours in the noise ordinance are different, this supersedes it. I think yes. that's the point that is being raised, okay. but yeah. there is compliance on that. Yeah. Further discussion from this commission? Close commission of deliberations. What is the pleasure of the commission? Mr. Chairman, I move approval of case PUD 15005 according to staff recommendations. We have a proper motion. Is there a second? Second. We have a second. Further discussion? District 1? Yes. District 2? Yes. District 4? Yes. District 5? Yes. District 3? Yes. Unanimously approved. Thank you for coming. At this time, we move to item 12, County Administrator, uh, Mr. Rick Leary. I don't have anything beyond the appointments that are listed in the agenda for consideration. We have uh, affordable housing advisory committee to appointments uh, that are still uh, vacant. Any updates? Better place plan oversight committee. Any updates? Nothing yet. Zoning board of adjustment. Any updates? Yes, sir. 
Um, I'd like to appoint Mr. Brian Watts to that board. I have a motion to appoint Brian Watts to the at-large uh, uh, opening on the Zoning Board of Adjustment. Second. I have a second. Further discussion? All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none. Motion carries. Any other discussion on appointments to any boards, committees? I just wanted to ask on um, the at-large, let's see. It says Margaret Zahner's term expired 831. Is there a reason for her not to be reappointed? Well, I, is it okay for me to approach that? I appointed her last time, but when it's at, at large, do any of you want the opportunity to appoint someone, or do you want me to approach her and ask? Let's approach Ms. Zahner. She's a great choice. Then I'll, I'll take that and okay. do that. Thank you very kindly. Okay. Okay. Um, the attorney is standing because he has some very uh, late breaking news that he wants to share. Yes, sir, I'm giving my knee a break. All right, anything else, sir? I thought it was going to be important. All right, okay, we'll move over to the Honorable Tim Smith. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. This is the time of year when we uh, present to you the annual review and write off of uncollectible accounts receivables. Uh, this year, the total amount is $1,077,161.05. As an integral part of the physical year in process, all accounts receivable are aged and reviewed to assess collectability. Delinquent accounts that are deemed to be uncollectible are, by board resolution, written off the county's books. However, subsequent collection efforts do not cease with that action. So. Um, Yearly, we bring this amount to you, uh, and this helps us to uh, uh, keep our books in order with uh, government accounting standards that are uh, adopted. And uh, so this year, um, you can uh, see that, uh, as I mentioned earlier, that the ambulance amount is the 1.077 million. Uncollected water and wastewater is 12,952 and uncollectible worthless checks was $634. Uh, we would like to ask that you adopt a resolution approving the write-off of delinquent accounts receivable deemed to be uncollectible for the fiscal year ending September 30, 2015. And I'll be glad to answer any questions. I have one. District one. Thank you. Um, how were you able to reduce the ambulance fee by half? Right. That is incredible. Well, th that was um, really uh, initiated several years ago. We started a process uh, working with the ambulance billing folks um, uh, at the ambulance office where they would uh, send bills out immediately. And we know that just as it is in most folks' lives that um, uh, if you've received some service uh, and you're thankful for that, you're more willing to make sure you pay that bill versus it being a bill that comes out 90 to 120 days after the event, you know, it tends to not be as important. And so uh, with the due diligence of that uh, group, uh, along with Mr. Jones, uh, they found ways to immediately get the bills out, which improved collection. Uh, the remainder of these, um, if you remember last year, we had this discussion and we had a member of the, the audience that was here who offered to help us collect those bills. And so we worked with that individual um, the reality is is that um, these folks that don't pay these bills, um, probably uh, most of them have no resources to pay them. It's not a conscious choice uh, that I'm skipping out on a service that's provided to me. They just really don't have the resources. Uh, in addition, there are very strict uh, collection uh, um, guidelines that have to be followed by collection agencies. Um, those agents have to be registered with the state. Uh, you have to attend classes and be certified, and you have to know what the rules are. So it's not just as easy as someone saying, well, I'll help you, you know, go collect these. You have to follow very specific guidelines as it relates to collection, not just in this area, but from bill collectors uh, uh, everywhere that uh, there are certain rules. But uh, the reality is is that we've found that those uh, uh, quick distributions of the bills close to the event uh, actually provide the most benefit. Well, congratulations and thanks. <laughs> Welcome. I think that we understand the, uh, the general, uh, the accounting principles uh, that are there, and it doesn't um, 
you know, make us feel good that the amount is what it is, but it's a reality check for us that, you know, this is where we are and this is what we have to deal with as local government uh, there and with the efforts that take place even after we go through this particular process uh, there, then that does give us, uh, you know, hope that it's not as bad. And as District 1 mentioned, uh, Commissioner Harris, uh, we see the strides that are made and we know effort is going into it because we certainly don't want this to be an incentive for other people to say, jump on this bandwagon. Well, and let me uh, remind um, everyone, just as I had a few seconds earlier in my prepared statement that uh, these bills are not forgiven. It's right. just we write them off the book, but right. we continue to try to collect them. Exactly. And there are people that do years later pay these bills. So exactly. we continue that effort. So it's not that we stop the effort. It's just in any accounting to make the books correct uh, on an annual basis. Right. So the old rule of um, forgive and forget, we're not forgiving and forgetting is what you're saying. Right. <laughs> yes. <laughs> All right. Any further discussion? Okay, uh, this does require a resolution. Yes. Mr. Chairman? Yes, ma'am. I would like to offer uh, approval of the resolution of the write-off of the delinquent accounts. Proper um, motion for the resolution for the write-off of uncollectible accounts receivable. As presented. As presented. Sis, second. Have a second. Further discussion? All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. That's Thank all you very kindly. Have. Mr. Jones, did you have anything to add to what was said? You Mr. Won't pick Mr. Up Anderson, you going to wait till this afternoon to talk? Yes. All right, sir. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you might would want to wait. Okay, District 5. Uh, nothing I can think of. Um, oh. <clears throat> District 4? Um, I have nothing right now, sir. District 2. Uh, the Democratic... Uh, picnic that was scheduled for yesterday was rained out and will be rescheduled and, and I'll announce that when I hear. Okay, thank you so much. District 1. I don't have anything to report either. Okay, uh, Mr. Leary, the issue of the local option bid uh, preference uh, uh, keeps coming up and we know the spirit of the law, we know why it was implemented, but I understand that there are some consequences are some adverse effects this this happening with that is there a way that we can put that on a workshop agenda so that this commission can at least figure out what we need to do um, concerning that so that we are not uh, turning away competitive bids from beyond the borders of Putnam County and I think here lately it seems like we've been having to uh, yep, rebid yep. some things because the bid's coming back high because we don't have as many people bidding as we had at one time, and that's kind of alarming. Yep. We'd we'll be happy preference. to put that on the workshop agenda. I think Mr. Castleberry and I have presented a recommendation to you in the past about our concerns about that, so we'll be glad to reiterate that for well, you. Well, I think if you can bring it forward and, and say what we can do to uh, revise and repair and fix it so that we're not, uh, we understand the spirit of the law, but right now it's uh, some adverse effect. And if we can, uh, as far as I'm concerned, a, a draft for a revision for our next meeting would be nice, but I don't know what the consensus is of the team. I, I feel the same way as you do, Mr. Chair. Um, it, has, it has caused some problems. I know um, we're, we've got some out, out of town uh, contractors who just flat out don't even consider us. And uh, I think we're missing the boat there, too. I think the percentage of is where our issue is, and maybe you can drill down on, on, on that. Is you think that's where the main issue is, Mr. Leary? Well, we, we changed the ordinance a few years back to narrow that to a percentage. And if you, I mean, I think it boils down to either eliminating the local option preference altogether or narrowing the percentage even more uh, so it's a matter of determining which is which is the better option I guess between those two well, it's got to be something if if we uh, because I mean we, we're in a region and I think that some people fail to understand that we will not have everything we need within our county uh, there are going to be some times that in order for us to get best bid yeah. and we want to keep local people working but Absolutely. at the same time we can't afford not to have uh, competitive bids coming in on these big projects. 
I, I mean, I think it's outlived its usefulness, frankly. I mean, it, there was a time when it was beneficial to local contractors when the county made an effort to use it as an economic stimulus, and but it's kind of outlived its usefulness because it's become counterproductive and uh, we may not be getting the total number of competitive bids that we could otherwise get. I think that if we could get from our contiguous counties, especially the ones that, you know, that are competing for the same contractors here, that if we can get some language that you, you all can share with us, that'll kind of give us a, 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 a template per se for us to, to fix ours or to eliminate it, whatever the consensus is of, of, of the board at that time, District 1. I would like to see us workshop it and discuss it. And then I'd like to see us have a public hearing uh, when we get through, if we're going to make any changes. I agree. And I uh, hear from everybody. Okay. Council? We would have to have a public hearing if we're going to change the ordinance. Yeah, no question about that. Yeah. And so, I mean, again, uh, the transparency issue is, is not the issue. And then it's not a matter of, of us trying to take something from locals. We need locals to be competitive uh, with the areas and then the individuals who really are giving us best rates so that we're maximizing the uh, taxpayer dollar uh, should not feel like it's a waste of my time uh, to bid because I'm not getting any, I'm not going to get it anyway, and and that that certainly is a reason for them not to step up to the plate in the first place. I agree. Okay. Anything else to come before this board? At this Mr. time, Chairman. We'll, yes, sir. Could I mention just one thing? Uh, Miss Blythe, when she was given the United Way report. Um, wanted to let everyone know that our uh, campaign kickoff uh, breakfast is next Thursday at the Best Western East Palatka. You're certainly all invited. Uh, and this is when we really start our campaign in earnest. It runs for about three months to the end of the year. We try to get in and, and finish that before uh, March of Dimes and then Relay for Life, all those start in the spring. So that's our uh, uh, time to, to you know, build our campaign. And so those of you that are in business, we will be asking for opportunities to come speak to uh, your employees about participating in payroll deduction to United Way. And also wanted to thank two of your employees that uh, support United Way. Our treasurer this year is Don Jakovovitz, and Ann Allen also serves on our board of directors. So it's really uh, uh, the county has stepped up and has a lot of good folks helping us with that. But anyway, our campaign will kick off uh, officially next week. And we look forward to success again with uh, those dollars that are raised for the community. Thank you for allowing me to mention that. Yes, sir. Thank you so very much. This board is in recess and will reconvene at 5.05 p.m. Thank you for being here. Best Western. Thank you.